Hello and welcome to the Junkyard Love Podcast. Welcome to the Junkyard Love Podcast, where a majority of the episodes, I like to give a little bit of quick recommendations to the listeners right before the episode begins. So today's recommendation is in the form of someone to follow on YouTube, a YouTube channel. His name is Richard Grannon. His YouTube channel is Richard Grannon Philosophy. Uh, It's just Richard and then G-R-A-N-N-O-N Philosophy. I stumbled upon him. uh, I like came upon one of his videos and he was talking about uh, like complex PTSD. And so I just started listening to him. He kind of just like sits on his couch or sits in front of like a a whiteboard or he just tries to to explain these concepts and what he's learned uh, getting through PTSD is uh, he's got advice on drugs and addiction. Uh, He's got advice on like sexuality, guided meditation, uh, forgiveness, just a, a lot of great stuff. So that's Richard Grand philosophy on YouTube. Remember, this is just something I'm sharing to you. It's free, man. You could do this. You, if, if you're ready to handle these things and you're ready to, to go, you know, take care of yourself. If, if you're at this step where you got some stuff that, you know, you want to try, try to get, get a hold of, you know, you can do it. You can start just tiptoeing into it and learning about it. You don't have to go full bore. You don't have to buy a, a course, any of that. Just go on YouTube and maybe learn about it. Like listen for 10 minutes once a week. And then maybe, you know, in, in a few weeks, you can listen for 20 minutes if it really catches your ear. So you're capable, man. Let's get going to the podcast. We got Jace. Let's roll. Dude, do you know you have like a podcast voice? I have a podcast voice? I think you do. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, I, I think you kind of have that. That Welcome to the Late Late Show. <laughs> You know, I actually, uh, I was talking with my last podcast I had with Joseph Crumb. Um, we were talking about how he, uh, when he was younger, like how he got into singing. Mm-hmm. He he loved doing, like, he was a funny guy. He liked doing impersonations and stuff. Like, you know, like you make your voice deeper, like like uh, Garth Brooks or something. Yeah. Um, and I actually always loved doing that. Like, that was just a super fun thing for me to do. And um, acting. Like, I loved acting too. And I feel like, like, I don't like actively participate in these things now uh-huh. but i feel like i do just naturally have like a i've probably heard enough podcasts i actively listen to podcasts i'm always like, like the the show host like the ellen degeneres role is always fascinating and wonderful yes. and i study that so yes. i feel like maybe i accidentally like or, or subconsciously rather embody it yeah yeah bro, yeah, yeah you it. probably do you i'm just do. i'm taking notes with ellen degeneres i love podcasts too i've always i mean i've watched do you watch the breakfast club yes yes yeah, sure, right every me. one of them i yeah. mean love the breakfast club yeah. big fan of that but uh joe rogan also a great mm-hmm. one too but they're just you can actually get on there and learn yeah bro isn't that crazy i mean that's that's the thing about podcasting in general like even if it's just not every podcast is educational, but I feel like it's such a way to learn. So many people are brought to podcasting because they want to learn something yes. about, you know, something they're already interested in. Exactly. And it makes it enjoyable and you get to go through that process of the growth in the same swing, you mm-hmm. know, and a lot of the times it might not even be growth, but it's like, okay, maybe this guy got on the podcast and act how I don't want to act on the podcast mm, because right. I saw the reaction, you know, it yep. invoked. But then okay. I see Kanye get on and I'm like, fuck, I wish like at some point that I could be in such a solidified spot in my life to where I can come and speak my mind like that, oh, and, right. you know, and not be worried about what is Susan, Jake and Chris going to think if I pop off on this podcast like yep. this, you know, yep. like yep. that. Dude, it's, so, it's so hard to, to grow out of that. It's so hard to like we're always we're always strangling like ourselves like trying like trying to filter ourselves make sure we don't say the wrong thing Mm -hmm. um dude we're like we're under there just trying to breathe we're trying to figure out what we really want to say but we're like i don't want to offend anybody because like that's the thing man i I think we just got to trust each other that like you know none of us are purpose perfect we're not going to always say the right words we're going to like flip over our, our sentences and stuff but like if it's all love it's all love like yes. it's like I'm not coming yes. from a bad place. Like I, if I said something wrong, we could talk about it, and I didn't mean it probably. But exactly, and it's yeah. like Jake, you can say anything that you want, and I don't have to agree with you, but I still love you. No doubt. You know dude. what I mean? No like it, it doesn't have to be this. 
boom, boom, we're going to butt heads and, you right. know, have a brawl over. And that's what I love. And I am a very opinionated person. I've gotten a lot better with it in the past. But I love what you said before about, like, we're trying to breathe because that's how I feel sometimes. And you know how when you're around somebody in, like, me, you don't know my background too much, but you know how when you're around somebody and you do know their background, so you literally will say shit to, to like, fit into what you think that they think is the right thing yes bro that's so real and it's fun we do the shit out of that yeah and it's just weird because it's like at the end of the day we shouldn't have to do that but we've been kind of conditioned you know yeah we have been conditioned i mean it's it's like this like i mean even from a young age like in the western world i guess the whole world probably but like you grow up and it's like you start acting out you start being loud in a position where like your parents are trying to keep everything quiet and it's like a stop no shh like you shush shush mm -hmm. like it starts there like this um and that's not even just a bad thing that's just like how we have to live in the world but yeah, it, yeah. it adds up in in so many situations where we're like people pleasing like i you know i, I have my my cases of people pleasing hardcore of just trying to I'll, I'll back up so my my when i'm like projecting where i'm going like okay like maybe they're into this so let's talk about that thing mm -hmm. like you know you saying like uh, you know some of their past like so you can bring up that and have that relation with them We're always looking for like ways and in, in, in same grounds to have relation on and so it could be a bad thing Because we could treat somebody as we think their past is mm -hmm. or We could make it a good thing and like maybe start there if there's nowhere else to start I guess yeah. but then then address it like and it that's a great point because you you can find common ground yeah. So even though you have differences, you're coming from a point of connection versus a point of arguing or conflict. Right. You know, and I feel like if we base things off that love, then it gives us an opportunity to step into a different type of realm versus yeah. I'm going to attack you and you're going to attack me and we're going to see who thinks my opinion's right. And mm -hmm. if more people think mine is right than you, then I'm right. <laughs> right that's a crazy way to act and we get caught up in that shit i mean the craziness that's going on in the world there's a lot of that you see like on social media mm -hmm. you know especially in our small town a lot of people are just they're so caught in the nets they're so oh, caught in their dude, own mazes and, and the mazes were laying out for each other on accident without knowing it yeah it's it's, it's a mess and I, I appreciate that you see eye to eye and, and you reach you reach for conversations and you see new people and people with with love first man i think that's a great thing that's it's powerful it is and i think it's important too for people to understand that like you don't always have to be feeling that way in order to like go into that you know like right. you can have a negative feeling inside you and still go into something in a positive manner right yeah you can see that you got that negative feeling like okay maybe i have a, a bias towards this thing or yeah. this person that i'm approaching like Let's not meet there then. Yeah. Like, let's start somewhere else. I don't know how it was for you. When you were younger, like, were you the type to, like, spaz on somebody if they had a different opinion? Um, no, I was never really spaz. I, I wouldn't really spaz. I would, like, backpedal, and then I would tr I would backpedal and not stand up for myself, but then I would kind of look at what's going on, okay, and then I would see how I can try to approach it again. So mine okay. was always like a like I'm right behind someone's dance and I'll see if I can, okay, well now that I understand you a little bit better, let's see if I can outsmart you almost. So mine yes. wouldn't be like a pop off, but I would try to like almost get back at them and make sure they know that I So you had some tactical, you oh, had some yeah, tactical absolutely. approach, which that's good. In, in every way. You're an innovator, so I feel like that's something that comes along with that is yeah. finding the right way to approach things. Yeah, I mean, you know? that's my, my growing up was like, like, teaching myself these sort of things is literally just watching other people like everything that i know the way that i internalize things like as an infj too uh mm -hmm. the myers-briggs like mm -hmm. i i'm always watching people before i approach the situation it's like a it's a i'm always trying to find where to meet people at like i'm always yeah. trying to find that common ground and it's yeah. not even like this thing where it's like i'm so peaceful i can find yeah, the yeah, I don't yeah. even, it's just what my you're brain you're naturally does. doing it. yeah it's what my brain does yeah. and i have to navigate the world like that it's not it's not easy like everybody has their thing and the way they process the world that's just how i process mine exactly um, what did you so so you said what, what was your upbringing like like what, what was your brain type like back then so just to give you a little background uh my mom was the one who raised us. My dad was around, but he was never like in the household. I grew up with three other women. So it was my little sister, my big sister, Taylor, you know her yep, well, yep. and uh, my oh, mom. Taylor. So uh, 
it was crazy, man. It was crazy. My mom's in recovery now, but addiction throughout my whole family. Uh-huh. You know, my mom's been married five times, so a lot of different people in the household and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know. I always felt like my mom really showed me how to be self-sufficient. Okay. You know, so she gave me that kind of boldness. I remember we were talking earlier just about like being in a household and, you know, sometimes they're like, be quiet or you're supposed to do this or have your manners at the dinner table. Like I didn't grow up eating dinner at the table, you know, All right. but I listened that. to my mom be very bold and that gave me permission subconsciously to do the same thing with people around me. Right. Damn. So it was something that I'm really grateful for. And like a lot of people can look at certain situations and, you know, take one thing from it. But I'm super happy. Like we didn't, you know, have the biggest house and shit like that. But like my mom taught me to fish and now I can eat forever, you know, like. Oh, yeah. So it, it's it's dope. And I always try to look at the positive side of it. You know, I know a lot of people can get like resentments towards their parents and stuff, uh-huh. which is a total natural feeling, you know walking into school and maybe you don't have the right outfit on and somebody talks some shit to you and then you're like well fuck dad if you were here right. and you would have gave me shit then no doubt i'd be fresh and i'd be in the circle with the cool people instead of over here looking yeah. a certain dad you way. did this to me by not buying me that jacket that i said i needed <laughs> yeah you know? exactly. like I, as a young kid we will formulate our entire like existence off these things if we're not careful we will yeah we will and it's it's a very very scary territory it is to it make is. that your ultimatum Right, bro. But it's, you know, I think a lot, I think we stumble into it a lot. Like um, a lot of people our age, you would say between 20 and 30, I feel like nowadays are just, you know, childhood trauma. Like that's a huge thing that we're like working through. And a lot of it is like, like for me, it points to where I was doing stuff like that. Like I would see like all the resentments that I would have towards my mom. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, you know, you justify them in such strange ways as a teenager. And, um, and like, even if you, you get to a point where you accept them and you're like, okay, I do feel these things. Like here's what's going on. Then you kind of have to look at like, okay, I was like acting out because of that. I was, I was changing the way that I would interact with this person because I am mad that they weren't this thing for me at this age. And Mm -hmm. I've kept that going for seven years. You know what I mean? Exactly. You get to a point where you're older with the parent stuff where it's like, you've got to really start seeing them as just a separate, that they're a human being living their life and you're a human being living their life. Like, you took the words right out of my mouth, man. Right? That is the best way to put yeah. it. They're a human. Yeah. It's, and, hey, it's hard as heck. I mean, I have, I've, I've got, I talk about it with my counselor, like I struggle with a lot of family stuff still. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's where you got to be. You got to just try to remind yourself, like I'm getting mad at them. I'm expecting them. I'm wishing they were doing these things for me at this moment, but mm-hmm. I'm not inside their brain. I can't be. Yeah, no. And like, just like we go through things that shape us to be the people we are, like we weren't there when our moms and dads were growing up. No, man. They could be repeating the same cycles that they went through, yes. you know? And like, we're lucky enough, Jake, that we have an opportunity to where we live in a time where you can go on this phone right here and you can get so much positive information along with negative information. You'd mm-hmm. be the, you'd be the, you know, dictator on which direction you're going to yeah. go. But it's, it's incredible. Yes. It's nothing short of incredible. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a lot for us to like deal with, but it's so great that we, we can deal with it and we can learn from it and grow. I mean, dude, our, our, this generation, like of people who are just absorbing all this, you know, the childhood trauma stuff, like that whole corner of the internet, Mm -hmm. it's going to be beautiful in like four to five years, like in crazy ways. Like we're going to understand each other on such intellectual levels. It's going to be great. It already has. I mean, just think about like the conversation of anxiety 20 years ago. (laughs) Right. They would, people would walk away. They wouldn't even like let you finish talking. They'd yeah. be like, I don't even know. You're not even speaking English. They'd be like, dude, you're a pussy. Get over yeah. it. <laughs> like what? So, so you're sad? Yeah. Fucking man up, bro. Exactly. When it's like a lot, uh, when it's like that is such a real thing. And I have a friend who actually is going through like severe, almost to like a disassociation point of anxiety right mm-hmm. now. So it's like really been heavy on my heart. And I can tell when I talk to him that like, I've never felt anything like that. And so that makes me really feel for him. And it makes me like understand that we can't be so judgmental right off the rip because we don't know what other people are feeling. Right. What do you, so that part you're talking about how you like, cause you felt your own pain. Like you felt the human emotions, like you, but you're like, I haven't felt this, like what you're particularly feeling. Like you are able to recognize like what you're going through is something that I haven't had to deal with, but I can, mm-hmm. I can empathize with, I, I, feeling that you can recognize that i think so many people 
it's not an easy thing to do at mm -hmm. all, but like being able to recognize that is a powerful position. A lot of times we're always trying to understand like from experience, like um, as much as I'm always trying to draw in my life, like how can I relate to this person with what I've been through? A lot of times it's like, dude, I didn't even, I, I can't even imagine what you're going through. Mm -hmm. But like that typical thing of letting yourself slip into their shoes, you know, like put yourself in their shoes. It really is so powerful. So powerful. Like, and, you, and you could do that for a second like you did, like, hey man, I feel this and like it's something it's it's next level yeah um but it's real and and so what what do you just as a homie um say we've got say we've got a listener that they've got homies who okay. the, the listener doesn't deal with too much anxiety themselves but they've got homies who do okay um, i always want to give it give a little bit of like here's something maybe you could say this maybe you could give them this example maybe you could be this sort of pillar for them um same, same situation. What, what do you got advice? I love that. Really? I love that. And so my biggest thing in situations like this is number one over anything. I have to be there. Right. So I have to validate these feelings because I know that if my friend is telling me something, then it must be what he's actually feeling. And so after I validate that for them, it kind of takes some of the power away from it, you know, because I'm I'm. I'm revalidating to him that it's okay that you're feeling like this. And not only am I saying that, I'm saying I don't feel like this, but I still think it's okay for you to Ooh, feel like yeah, this, damn, damn. you know? Yeah. And then number two, it's I really got to be there. So not just over text, like when this happened a week ago, it was with my really close friend and me and JC hopped in the car and we went and picked him up and we went to Portland Beautiful. and there was nobody there because like the COVID and stuff. And yeah. it was just cool. And you can see like, people slowly start to transform outside of their feelings when they have other positive humans around them. Whether they're still feeling the emotion or not, it makes them feel like, okay, I have support. Yes. You know? Because when you're by yourself, especially, like you can really convince yourself in your own head cavity of like, this is the absolute truth. This is what I am. I am this thought. I am this wrangler of this thought. Yes. You know? Yes. Like, and, and what you pulled him right out of it. But I, I like how you said validate validating his feelings so i think that that's a hard one um I, I always have to remember with myself because i'm such like an advice giver i'm like bro i, I got the answer like because i, I have yep. certain relationships with certain friends that like it's been that for so long uh -huh. that it is like they're coming to me for that yep and there's that but there's also times where i'll get too carried away and i gotta slow down myself and be like hey say are you okay like hey i love you listen everything's gonna be okay make sure you don't forget to say like this really, I, I get that. Like, explain mm -hmm. further. Like, let them get it out. Um, address that. Like, hey, man, this sucks. I'm so sorry. Like, not just run right in. Sometimes I'll run right into like, here's what you got to do, bro. What did you meditate yes, this morning? Yes, you know yes. What I mean? See, like, that's me I too. Wanna, I never want to like push people shit like that. But. No, no, and I always too because I'm about if I have a problem, I'm about a solution. That's how I am. Okay, and so it always puts you. You are just conditioned if somebody comes to you with the problem to say, okay, how are we going to figure this out? Which right. is such a great quality in a human being, right? right. Like you're not just going to sit on the couch and go, oh, I'm fucked. You know, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, there ain't I'm no here. way I'm getting out of this. You're stuck here forever. Yeah, because the thing is, is some people do that shit. Yeah. Let's keep yeah. it real. Some yeah. people do that shit, you know, and, and we don't know what they're going through or whatever, but I, I know it ain't going to work. Yeah. yeah. I know you're going to yeah. feel the same way the next day, yeah. you know? And so for me, I do that too. But a lot of the times, even with my texts and shit now, Jake like I'll write a response and I'll be like oh that's too preachy oh yeah I'm I'm always doing that yeah you know so but I'll still say what I wanted to say but like you were talking about before with approach I'll still say what I'm gonna say but I start my conversation differently and then I bring right. it in as like the closer right right you yeah, know because dude I mean that's we got to remember like we know our, in the people who are contacting us about this stuff like we're close to them a lot of times we know them it's like hey remember like they're they're sensitive just like you and you yes. know you know specifically like if it's your good homie like I know how he's sensitive so I'm going to make sure I don't poke that button I'm mm -hmm. not going to prod that bull on my homie like because mm -hmm. you know I just as a human myself I got places where it's like you poke me there and I'm like Ugh, you know yeah everybody's oh, got that me too, so me too. When, when you know that your homie or your family member or someone you love listener is in that spot starting with that like that validation yes it's, it's so great Jeez, yes I, that's great advice um i want to so talking about upbringing i was mm -hmm. it's been floating in my head and i got i could be freaking wrong but did okay. you grow up in south kelso um in hud housing yes yeah bro i i lived right by you 
So no yeah, way. yeah. So I got evicted. My, my family got evicted from those like the yellow duplexes on yes. 9th. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I think I just remember because I think I remember like your sister was always around. Like I don't think we were friends, but I like knew who she was or something like that. Of like, course. Of course. Yeah. And yeah. I, I can't remember. Like I'm too. Maybe we played hide and seek together. Probably. I don't even remember, yeah. We but, were probably out there doing some <laughs> finessing yeah. in the neighborhood at that yeah. age. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Uh, it's it's so. I mean, obviously, it seems like another lifetime ago, but it seems like someone else's life when you think about like childhood. Like the older I get, the more I'm like, man, that was like. My life was just so different. Like mm -hmm. yeah, you get, look back. you get disconnected from it, you know. Especially because a guy like yourself, you take the bull by the horns and you make your situation look different, right? You know. And once you make your situation look different, it's very easy for you to forget where you came from, right? You know. And that is such a good thing to make your situation look different. But I always like to, like you just said, you had that thought. Think back to that moment. Because that's a way I can pull gratitude into today. Yes. You know, yeah. it's like, I'm so grateful that um, my whole family has put themselves in the position to not be there anymore, you know? And like, you get the opportunity to show people that even though that's where you came from, that you don't have to stay there. Right. You know? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out too. I think it's uh, a big thing with me is like making sure I'm not bringing resentment with me too. Like I have a mm -hmm. lot of like, you know, I got to work through it and that's a big thing that I'm trying to do is like, you know, I'm working through my shit out loud. Like I don't yeah. got shit figured out, man. I'm trying yeah. to figure it out though because I think that, that there's strength in just telling people like, let's fail together. Let's do it out loud. Let's, you know, let's try. There yeah. is, there is. And I love that point because for so long, thought I had it all figured out, man, right, and thought right. I had it all figured out. And it's crazy to think about the times where I thought I had it all figured out in my life. When I look at them now, I'm like, man, you were, real tri you were tripping. Knucklehead, bro. <laughs> yeah, you were, you were really tripping. Tell me. You know, and it's just like now you get to, and I love what you said because when you stay green and you, you reaffirm that you have more to learn and more to become, that's exactly what happens. Yeah. You know? And every day is something new to learn, man. Yeah. Every conversation, everybody knows something you don't. Exactly. And that's the truest thing ever. Like that is the most true. You can't even like argue with it for a second. Second, Everybody knows something you don't. Everybody. And yeah. even if they don't, let's say it's like everybody does. And it's like you can look at somebody and say, okay, that's what I'm not going to do. Right. Yeah. You know? It's something to learn from them. Something to learn from them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yep. it's like to have that perspective, I think, is worth more than anything no doubt uh let's talk about perspective man i feel like you got a great perspective and i'm excited that you are newly hopping into the the writing game yes and by yes. writing i mean i mean <laughs> hip-hop rap man you've been starting making music lately yes, i think sir. that's so great um i you know i see things so so i had a comedian on um uh, Joseph Crum, he's a great guy, and I like I was I kept calling him or like referring to him when I was typing it back up as a funny philosopher. Uh -huh. um, and I've, I'm really obsessed with philosophy the last couple of years, like learning it in my own way, um, exploring what it means, exploring like with comedy is kind of like pointing out the edges of the stuff. That, like we got to make fun of ourselves so we know what our edges are and where we can push them mm -hmm. and know that we're being ridiculous. Um, philosophers, you know, are always like, hey, here's how reality is and here's how we're going to mess it up if we're not dumb. And you add historians, here's yeah. what happened before and whatever. But I, you know, if you look at like what future, what our future, like our current time has done, to me, it's this like incredible, just big old bowl mixed of like cultures in um, like there's not just a, a philosopher now and not just a poet, but mm -hmm. there's there's like music makers who are trying to communicate those same things that yes. that um, philosophers and, and poets and writers and stuff are always trying to communicate. You're pulling something from your brain that's not here in physical reality. Mm -hmm. You're trying to write it down. You're trying to say it over some lyrics. Um, you're trying to create a feeling out of nothing. Man. Exactly. It's, and it's almost like channeling. Yes, bro. You know? And okay, channeling, bro. Uh, for a listener who has no idea what you're talking about, yeah. give him a lowdown on channeling. Okay, so, and I'll just, I'll, I'll be real, real brutally honest with you guys too. So a year and a half ago, if you would have told me something about channeling, I would have looked at you like you were crazy. Yeah. Okay. Um, luckily, I have an amazing woman who has came into my life since that point and who has put me onto spirituality and channeling and things like that. And so like on Mother's Day, for example, okay, I had nothing planned, Jake, nothing planned at all. I'm driving. Okay. We're in a red leaf drive through. And all of a sudden I get this overwhelming feeling 
to write something. And so I pull out my iPhone, I pull out my notes, and I start writing this poem for my mom. Now, when I'm doing that, it doesn't feel like I'm consciously doing it. It feels like it's very natural and easy. And to me, that's what channeling is. It's when you are very connected with real raw feelings. And so the stuff that's going to, I feel like Martin Luther King was probably channeling. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like he had such a strong feeling inside of him and such beliefs that it allowed him to go in front of people and let that overcome him. And that's why people were like, well, and I've noticed that when I create outside of channeling, it's a lot different. What do you mean create outside of channeling? Like with, with other people where it's not like your creativity? Or No, I mean, I feel like I create in different states. Okay, and I appreciate each state that I create in, but there's these moments where I'm like, this is it, you know? Yes. And I can be around people for sure, you know? It's definitely not I have to be alone, but it's like, it's that feeling when you think you got one. It's like when you're in the studio and you're like, and everybody's like, this, that's it. Yes, that's it, clicks. it That's the one. That's the single we're putting out before the album because yeah. it's going to go. Bro, you got to get yourself there. Even if it's not, you got to say that it is. Like you've got Yes. Like like if nobody ever believed in themselves, like literally think about it. If nobody ever believed in themselves, what what would our life be like? Like who who is the the people who are supposed to believe in themselves, the ones who are supposed to change things and supposed to write incredible things and yeah. and just make music, right? Like yeah. they got to believe in themselves. Have to. And that's board. why I love that Russ. Russ, bro, I love I Russ. I love Russ. And the whole yeah. rap community takes yeah. a big shit on him. It's funny. Right? I think that's a ploy, bro. That's a weird oh, thing. Oh, that's you, like, know, you know what it is? It's insecurity because he represents everything that they don't. For sure. You I know? Agree. I agree. And, and, and that's why they attack that man. And guess what? Does he say it in the most humble way? Of course not. It's hip hop. <laughs> it's hip hop. You're supposed. It literally hip hop was created on standing in front of somebody and telling them everything that you are better at and everything that's wrong with them and pulling all their demons up. That's what it's built off of. Yep. It's a sport. We're sparring. Yeah. And we're gonna oh, yeah. see who's better. You yeah. know. And so like I love that. I love that stick your chest out type of shit. You know. And I feel like that not only in music has made me what you know what i'm going for but like in everything in my career with sales and everything like waking up and saying you got this you got to you know there's like, so much in this world that's trying to tell you the exact opposite every day bro exactly exactly and you know what i believed it sometimes yeah and no, you know all. you know what helps me really believe that i can win is staying disciplined yeah Discipline equals freedom. That's what Jocko Willink says. Discipline equals freedom. And you know what most people think? The opposite. Yeah. You know, you ain't really free just because you don't got any obligations. The more obligations I have during the day, the better I feel about myself, the more I think I can win, period. Yeah, bro. You got to It's just like I wrote that don't strangle it on the, on the sticky note here like uh-huh. that's how it is it's it's funny because you think of discipline and you think that that's strangling it but it's like you already know what you want the discipline is how do you get what you know you want yes you know? something like that yes like, exactly like that exactly and then you have a plan of action yeah, you know like you turn the dream into a goal exactly it, and you lay out this see for me i feel really like and for the viewers too um like maybe you don't like to wake up in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you wake up, maybe that's when like you're feeling the most depressed and you kind of take a while to, you know, come to life and start feeling positive and getting those endorphins going and stuff like that. Like try, try before you go to sleep, have your exact day mapped. Okay. Like have your exact day. I know when I do that and I wake up the next day, it's like, I feel more excited because I know what's going on. Like this mm-hmm. morning I got to wake up and get on my bike and exercise and then get some fruit in me. And then I knew I was coming here to do this podcast. And just so everybody, everybody listening, like, of course, the first thing I think is I haven't seen Jake in a long time. Probably going to be some anxiety before I go there. Right. Yeah. You know like what I mean? going to take us a few minutes to get the ball rolling and connect. Yeah. Like, who is... knows who's there? Who knows what kind of mood he's going to be in? Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Who, know, who knows if we're going to buy it? And I'm a perfectionist, man. So it's yeah. like, I want it to go perfect. I want to say all the right shit. Well, you want to show up prepared, but you're also showing up for something that's like, it's, you know, a conversation. It's not like a, an interview. It's a conversation. Like, mm-hmm. let's see where we go. 
from what we were late on, you know, not so much something you could super prepare for. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's the beautiful part about things like this. Yeah. You know, is they but the the point of that is to is to commit. I knew once I sent you that DM and you said yes, I'm coming. It's on. I'm coming. It's on. You know, so like but the hard part isn't coming, it's sending the DM in the first place and committing. Right. You know? Dude, it's huge and it seems so overly obvious, but there's so many like there's so many weights lifted off our chest that it would just be just send that DM, bro. Like if you want to work with that rapper and you think your beats are tight, send him the shit, man. Send what, it. Like what could happen? Send like, it. He says no. Like, all right, well, where were you before? Yeah. Same place. Maybe he reads it and doesn't respond. At least yeah. you know you tried. Yeah. And then you know what? That's going to build a muscle to where the next time you try mm-hmm. to in one time they're going to respond. Right. We're, we're, dude, we're... And I say we're with a, a hardcore mirror right in my face, finger right in my soul. Mm-hmm. Like we're so afraid of failing. You know, I try my heart. Like I try to, you know, I try to wear my heart on my sleeve where I can. I try to try to fail out loud. Like I try to, especially with my music and stuff. Like because music is, I've been DJing for a long time, but music production and like singing and playing piano, like I love it, but I know that I'm not super good at it. Yeah. So I, I really try to fail out loud and like I'll even post it on social media because I think that there's nowhere in this world where so we see everything through the eyes of our media now Mm -hmm. that we don't see failure anymore, bro. We just see amazing people. We see six-year-olds who are just playing a harmonica and (laughs) and keyboard with their toes and you're like, fuck, what can I do, man? So we don't even try, bro. So we don't even try. We don't even, we not only try, like don't get a try because we're like, there's a part of us where like, I can do this. I really want to do this. I want to go all in. Like I want to really try to be a musician. I really want to try to be a rapper. I really want to try to be a, a whatever. There's that, so we get crippled to not even do that, but we also get crippled to just create. And, and, yes. he, and creativity is something that all humans should be able to partake in. You should be able to sing and fuck up. You should be able to play piano and hit wrong notes. Like, you know, you're not the one who's going to be on stage performing for hundreds of people anytime soon, but yeah. like, it's for you. It's enjoyable. Yes, and yeah. you love it, you know? Yeah. And, that's what it, and that's what it boils back to is that, but you're so right, and we get crippled by the thought of feeling. Or you post that picture and it don't get enough likes. And then six hours later, you're like, oh, I'm fucking taking that shit down. And then when you take it down, you're like, who's going to see that it didn't get enough likes and I took it down? Bro, that is some weird shit that we put ourselves through. I mean, I mean, it's crazy. And, it, you know, I'm speaking from my own my own stuff, you know, but it's we get so obsessed with somebody else reassuring us that what we're doing is what we're supposed to be doing instead of trusting our intuition. Right. We're pretty we're pretty disconnected from our intuition. Yes. Do you think do you think in order to get more in tune with our intuition we need to be willing to fail? I do. I do. I think that we need to be willing to take a hard look at what the world's trying to tell us. Right. Because I feel like everybody has a gift and I feel like some people's gift is to be a nurse and help people and some people's gift is to be an amazing teacher. You know, I know for me with music, I always knew it was it for me Mm -hmm. always ever since I can remember just I love it when I hear music when I write when I rap in front of people it's what makes me feel alive see now I denied that for so long because of fear of failure so it caused me to cover up those bad emotions because I knew what I was supposed to be doing and I wasn't doing it. So I was feeling such bad emotions that I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to drown myself in this substance so I don't have to, you know what I mean? So I don't have to look at the hard facts in the mirror, which is you are being called to do something and you are not doing it. Right. It's magical, man. I think it's beautiful. I think we're, we all got something that we could like, Man, every single listener, wherever you're at in your car, headphones, wherever it's at, like there's something inside of you that you know exactly what it is for you, bro. Like it's, yes. even if it's, it's, dude, Gary Vee said this thing one time. I was like, that's so real. He's like, if making Smurf shirts is, is something you love doing more than anything, you, you love printing Smurfs faces on shirts and selling them <laughs> and it's your passion. You just love Smurfs and you think they're, and it's, this your thing. That is your, you love it so much. Like, what are you doing not doing it, damn it? Like, yes. what are you doing? And I love me some Gary Vee, man. Yeah, great, yeah. Great, great, great perspective. And that's yeah. so true. It's so true. And it's so hard sometimes because people are like, God, a Smurf shirt? That's a dumb idea, even though I love to do it. You know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know? Someone's and writing then, it down. You know? But then once they act, and once they actually swallow the pride and they, you know, 
start making them and they realize that maybe Susie likes Smurf shirts too. Yep. That's the that's the revelation. That's the point where you're like, okay, this is it. And this is where even bigger than that comes in. Maybe everyone hates them, but you love them. Right. So keep going. Exactly. Keep going. See, that's the thing is we think that we're all trying to get, there's like this one they, right? There's this one like, I got to make something and it's got to meet this standard. Like if you're making music, if you're making hip hop, it's got to be able to go right head to head with, with Lil Wayne and Biggie and mm-hmm. like all the, it's like, what? Like I'm not trying to insert the thing I'm making to be competition with, with other things. Yes. I think that that cripples us sometimes. The um, Being afraid to fail a lot of times is a lot of times because we're, we're at the starting line of the wrong race. Like we started with the wrong why. Like, mm-hmm. uh, like we think, uh, he, here's a good example. Um, I had a guy uh, that was an, an electrician that was like doing something here. Mm-hmm. And uh, me and me and a homie were here and we were working on some stuff and he came in and he was just being polite. He's a really nice maintenance guy. But uh, his natural thing to say, I don't hear a lot when I work at Warehouser is like, um, oh man, one one big hit. That's all it takes is one big hit. And like, I would always hear that. And then he said that and I, it made it click like, oh, he thinks that like getting famous is the end goal here. He thinks wow. that like getting to that level of like, like what I'm doing is to get to that. And that is a symptom of what you're doing. That is, if, if you get to that fame and people worship you and people listen to your music, to me, that's like, you know, in making deals and making money off of your shit. Yes. That is a symptom of just putting your head down and like doing what only you can do so well. Yes. Right. And and I think a lot of times we start at that finish line and we, but you know, back to failure, we, we fail the race because we're, we're at the wrong terminal. We're not even mm-hmm. at the right place. We're, mm-hmm. we're about to race. We're about to race the 400 and we want to do a long distance, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, well I think said. just start, start starting with your why, man, like that. I, I think I mentioned in another podcast, Start With Why by Simon Sinek, that book. You probably read that. Love it. And I have yeah. read it. And yeah. Simon Sinek, he is next level, man. Yeah. He is next level. I love his perspective on stuff. But the fact that you were in a place, Jake, to even hear that and dissect that that's not where you're going for. Because right. I feel like we were talking about media before. It's like we are... We see the billboards. That's what people glamorize, right? Or the car or, you know, the perfect looking person who behind closed doors isn't so perfect. And right. so those are the things that we go for and we forget that most of the time the people that are on the billboards, they're coming from a true genuine state of creativity and that's just a product of it. Yeah. You know, we like them because they're able to be so original. Like, that's what we want. Yeah. We we want to be that within ourselves. And I feel like the whole world, it's all just feeling, right? It's feeling. So, like, when you hear that record, like, when you hear that record and you're like, yep, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. you feel, you feel, Mm -hmm. you know, or like when you have a really good friendship, you know, like, you just feel it. Yeah. You know, and so, like, I'm trying to feel more instead of look for my gratification in other things. Right, I feel Be- that. Yeah. Because it's so temporary Yeah. in things. It's so temporary. Like, And it gets less and less as you keep going. Like, At least for me, I always know growing up, I was like, okay, I want this. And then once you get it and you still feel the hole, you're like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. It's like right away, too. You're like, oh, yeah, that hole's there. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, like right away. Tr- try to keep doing that thing. You just keep following. Yeah. Just keep, keep chasing that carrot on a stick oh, you, without ever asking yourself what carrot you're chasing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then it's like, and then it's like, for what? And you talk about the they, and that's what it's for, is for they. And we're supposed to do stuff for us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And like truly be able to. Because guess what? If your intention is to make somebody else feel less than by what you have, like, I know personally how that feels, and like, it's just the wrong move. It ain't right. It's the wrong move. Like, it's the wrong move, not for them, for you. Because at the end of the day, I know my whole goal and everything, and you know, I feel that with you too. Is like, I just want to be happy. Yeah. You know. Dude, yeah, I'm just trying to live this life, man. Yeah. Like, I just want to say that I did that I really tried to do it at least, you know, like I want to say that I put my head down and like explored this life and I experienced what I really wanted to experience. I'm so alive. glad you just said that too, because when I put the first song on my SoundCloud, 
You know what my thought was? Because I had been thinking it for years, and I feel like this subconscious thought led me to so much bad in my life is, what if I die and nobody knows I ever wanted to make music or this is what I am? And so when that first song came out, it's, it's like, nothing matters after this. I don't have to make one more song. I don't have to make one more song. People know this is what I wanted and this was me. And whether I have some vulgar shit in there because that's what I experienced or that's what I grew up looking up to and thought was right. cool. That was your life. It's me. Yeah. Yeah. It's me. And you can like it or hate it. I love you. Yeah, bro. You know no what doubt. I mean? Like, no I love you. You listened. Yeah. I'm grateful for that. And even yeah. if you don't listen, you hear people saying that. That's what I'm doing. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, that's, that's where the that's where the hot spot is for me yeah. you know like yeah that's that's important man we get caught up with i feel like i come to places with my music and my like creation my sound art and poetry and stuff that i like like it, i'm not trying to make something that people will like which is mm -hmm. you know with music you get that's a slippery slope because you can't be dumb and ignore the audience like i get that yes. but i'm also who i am what i'm trying to be is you know in my heart i feel like i'm i'm a revolutionary like I, in my heart i i want to push the edges of music i want to make new kinds of music yes. i want to i want to i want i want people to make edits of my music and make it better like maybe maybe they remix the, the idea that i had because maybe they're like he lacked it on this and i want to make sure it makes sense or something like i like i'm not doing it to to be liked i want to do what what means the most to me what means the most to me is like creativity and like trying to yeah. push the edges of it not trying to get it right but, yeah the yeah. juices i hear that with you a lot and you know it's brought me a great amount of perspective because i'm so the opposite yeah like when i hear you like when we were over here before we started the podcast and you're like you know and you can just fail and mess with it like when i go in i'm like shit i need something that's gonna fucking work yeah. you know what i mean and then like it kind of takes you because here's where my mind goes is you know drake made toozy slide for tiktok right you know what i right. mean so like you this see is, things right. like that and yeah. it puts you in that realm but it's like I also want to stay true to me and I know when I'm doing things out of that reverse engineer state although they might be what's pop it kind of takes you away from the straight line that you're right. supposed to go on in your true purpose you right. know but I really love what you said also before we got on the podcast is you could never explain yourself in one three minute and 30 second song, no matter how hard you try. As much as we think we can. We're yeah. like, this represents me. It's like, do people haven't figured out, they don't have you figured out now, bro, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's different because there will be times where I go into making music and it's, it's ego for two minutes and 40 seconds on a track, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's other times where it's vulnerability and me talking about what I really went through in my life and shivering from right. withdrawals and like real shit and like, feelings are fickle right you know like one day yeah. you can wake up jake and be like i'm motherfucking jake bryan's baby you know what i mean and then the next day you can wake up and be like damn i mean that's how i feel for real already <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you know and so like i see different spectrums and i want to create off of all the reality and not minimize it yeah dude we, we got to explore we got to be willing to fail we got to be willing to like try out other people's shit like all right let's ha how do i get it to be like that like oh, okay so drake made this for tiktok like let me try that out like but don't get too caught up in, like if you get in the booth and you're like just play that drake instrumental and let me just freestyle over for fun that's learning that's great yeah. but you don't have to walk out and be like i represented myself 100 percent. it's like no no i'm perfecting yes. my craft yes. i'm learning it like okay i tried this style of hip-hop because it's going to make my vocal structure better in this way now my lips know how to move in this specific way man yeah give it, give it 20 years of just like trying shit and, and not not settling for any of it and you're gonna be you know. and that goes back to what you're saying about not being scared to fail yeah and it's so important and like in caring what people think too much right you know because then it really just halts uh bro this yeah. mic <laughs> at least you got a great catch on board i know well, I've, been, I've been eyeing it um I'm, I'm gonna unplug this real quick but uh give me the lowdown of uh Give me a little down of, of your start with music because I know because I want to make sure I cover um, your your smart business man too like you've like I want to make sure we you've got some info from the books you've got some info mm -hmm. from from real life experience from being a salesman you've met a lot of kind of people you're good at people mm -hmm. um, that's that's super great and I love how you're like you're taking that and putting it into a more passionate thing so let's skip before 
before you were a salesman, tell me about um, like when you were younger, when you first got into hip hop itself. Like you remember what you were listening to? Yeah. Like who you were listening to? Yeah. So like I was the I was the kid who like fell asleep to uh, Eminem. You know. You know, Eight Mile, everything like that. Uh, when Fifty Cent, you know, first started coming out, and he had, you know, in the club and all those types of records that just went. I knew early on that that was something that I was overwhelmingly excited about. No doubt. You know, like, because no when you sit in a room, you know, some people like, some people see a fidget spinner and they're like, that's their shit. And then other people are like, what the hell is that thing? Like, this was, you know, this was my thing. And so I just got so indulging in it, you know, I just wanted to hear everything and now that I've grown older like I love I love ASAP Rocky no doubt because of his visuals and his flow like I love people for I love Russ because I can just see the genuine human being that he is Mm. and like he gives me a different perspective when I go to his Instagram page I see him with his mom you know and like I love that it's wholesome you know and then like I go to future and I I hear him say you know you know, he's basically <laughs> pissing on bitches. Yeah, he's, you know? he's at six other other people's moms. So yeah, just his yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I love him as an artist. Like yeah. he he brought me feelings, like in in a type of energy and swag that I love. Mm-hmm. You know, and it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that I condone what he does. Yeah, that's some silly. Dude, we get let's I, we got to get caught up real, right here, really quick. So put a pin in where we were at, but. I actually had um, in the similar sense of like people thinking I represent him when R. Kelly like first started getting like it was like the case came back up like a year ago where he was like did some fucked up shit Mm -hmm. and I was playing not even an R. Kelly song but it was one of those songs where you'd be like wait what song is this is is R. Kelly it's like something it was like shaggy or something like that like something that you'd think with with R. Kelly and this girl who was drunk she comes up to me with a finger in my face like do you know what what R. Kelly has done like freaking out on me about and I'm like hold up yeah you think that I'm (laughs) like I didn't pause the mic and say yo this song I'm about to play I condone it and (laughs) piss on your friends piss on little kids Cause that's what this motherfucker does. Like what? Yeah, no. Like, dude, I'm doing my job. I'm playing. Like, I don't have time to listen to what's going on in the news right now. Like, I mean, there's certain things you like, just don't play this song in that certain environment, but um, exactly, we, we do. Yeah. Like you can love something about someone like future, man. Future is such a talented rapper. He's, he's so in his own lane. He pushed the boundaries in so many ways. He, he gives you that feeling, bro. Lyrics, lyrics, and especially with hip hop, Lyrics in a beat are trying to communicate a feeling to us anyway, exactly. bro. And future gives us that feeling. It's not so much about, I mean, I'm again, I don't want to condone everything that he does myself, no. but like, yeah, it's, uh, you're so, so you always vibe off of like, you're a feeler. Like you're always like, this makes me feel, I want to see what that's about. Like exactly. And with music, even on my way over here, like I'm picking my songs in consciously. This isn't subconsciously. I'm consciously thinking what type of mood do I want to be in when I get out of my car and say Word. hi to Jake. Word. You know? What I do to say? Yeah, you know, so like for me, that's what it does. And the fact that people are able to bring you that, I have to understand that those people are people. And just because they're famous does not take away the fact that they are constantly making mistakes exactly like I am. Right. You know, just like that's where I get a disconnect. I gotta be honest with some people. Cause like for me it's like just because they have a hundred hits doesn't mean that they're not going through the same shit you are. Yeah, doesn't bro. mean because he's Kevin Hart that he might not end up at a pool party and sleep with another woman and get shit on for it. <laughs> right. Bro. You know what I mean? Like we're he's a human being. We're people. Man. We're people. And guess what? Do I want to do everything possible to set myself up to where that never happens because I love my woman so much and I do not want to hurt her? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, but do but I? You can learn from Kevin Hart exactly, what he's found to. Exactly. Yeah, dude, we get it. <laughs> it when you could just look at things through the lens of like not trying to find what you don't like about somebody, but like I think when music lovers have this thing that a lot of people that that non music lovers sometimes don't get, and it's is that like like I'm not. It's. I'm finding what I like about you. Like I'm finding what I like people who are like hip hop fans and like, Oh, okay. Like, cause do you like all genres of music? Like, do you, I do. Yeah. See, I do, man. so like just finding 
I'm not trying to represent it. I'm not trying to say that this represents what I believe in. I'm just saying like this person made me feel a certain way and that's amazing. Like as human beings on this world, mm -hmm. like why aren't we just trying to have different experiences and different musicians could give us different experiences. Yeah, when you're be open, open to them though. Exactly. Yeah, you gotta be open Exactly, though. you gotta be open yeah. to it. And I feel give like we get so caught up in our own agenda mm -hmm. that it's hard, you know, and I totally understand, you know, what people are doing when they're coming at you in that certain circumstance is they're trying to bring you to where they are. Mm -hmm. And I did that stuff too with my friends and stuff, you know, because you want, you feel validated if people think what you think and you right. get offended when you don't, right? you know, but like, that's how I know, like when I talk to you, like I know that you are in a process of growth. No doubt, yeah. You know, and like that's how I try to be upfront about it, man. That's what I'm yelling it from the mountains. Like, yes. I'm not fucking perfect, man, by any means. And that, and and even by saying that, it allows you to have other people come into your life, right? You know, like, yeah. And what I mean by that is like, some people might have been intimidated by you, you know. Always a cool kid in school. Always was able to get around in the social crowd, you know. And by you saying that. I'm not this one thing and I'm going through a process of enduring all qualities of life and accepting all different perspectives gives people the opportunity to say he isn't th he isn't just this one thing even though that is a part of him. So mm -hmm. maybe he'll understand me and where I'm coming from and give me an opportunity. Wonderful. That's a great perspective. I'm you glad know? you pointed that, pointed that out for me too. Yeah, dude, uh, you got to do just giving people that open slate, just allowing them to grow, allowing them to, we, we try to define ourselves in three minutes and 30 seconds. We try to find ourselves in one podcast. Like yes. I'll, I'll get new, new time podcasts on here and they'll text me afterwards and be like, Hey, you, you can, you can delete whatever. Like I kind of rambled whatever. And I'm like, Hey, you're good. Yeah. Like you are good. Yeah. Like you, you, you didn't know you didn't represent exactly who you are. And if someone listened to this and they never met you in their life, they know exactly who you are. No. Cause that's fucking impossible. Yes. You can't, I got almost 50 episodes. You don't know who I am in 50 see, episodes. But until you say that to them, see, by you being in a spot of growth, Jake, you are enabling people to feel better about themselves. Because then you get the response. You don't respond like this. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to cut that out. It was a little outlandish and rambling. But you hit them with the response that you say, yeah. it's okay. And guess what? You got next time. Yeah, That's bro. what I love. I hope I fuck up. Come on again. I hope, this, I hope this track doesn't go. The next yeah. one's gonna. Yeah, dude. You know what exactly. I mean? And you then that's, that's that chip on your shoulder. And yes. I love that shit because I, I've been like back against the wall my whole life. So like yeah. that's the attitude I've always had, you know, like. I woke up to a dirty fucking alley growing up before I went to school. You know what I mean? So like that for me, that stick your chest out. And I feel like that has contributed to where I'm at. But now that I used that to build a solid backing as far as being taken care of. Now, guess what? It's time to work on being humble. Yeah. Letting other people have their opinion, even though you disagree. Right. I yeah. got a question for you. What do you think for you started your process on self-reflecting and really trying to open yourself up to go to a next level spiritually in other ways? Yeah, mine was, um, I mean, long story short, like suicidal as hell. Like okay. it, it was, uh, it was like a lot of things compounding and it was almost with, with the suicide thing, it was almost like started to be my personality to me. Like I didn't realize I was, I've had this, I had a moment where I literally had put a, a gun, a physical gun to my head, touched it with my, my temple. Oh my. And it was like, there was no moment where I was like, uh, like I wasn't instantly aware. Like, did I just put a gun to my head? What am I doing? What the fuck? Like I wasn't yeah. grossed out by the gun. I was, I like could look at it afterwards and be like, oh, okay, so that's, that's exactly how far away it is, huh? And it's, um, and so, and it, but I didn't have the ability. So that moment wasn't super profound to me when it happened. It was retrospectively later when I was like, what the fuck? Uh -huh. So I was so caught up in who I had made my identity to be because I thought I, I needed to be these things or deserve to be these things. Mm -hmm. Um, but so in, in around that same time, I, I did have like one night where like that, 
that train of thought like woke up of like a, what are you doing? Like where I needed that, I needed that part of me. I needed that spiritual side of me, that person who, who wants love, that Jake who, who, who just wants to live life and, and be a human and just experience love before I die. Mm-hmm. Like that part wasn't, didn't have the reins, but it was so like shoved down in, in inside. Of it me, was there. It was there. Yeah, it, it was there. But like, so in the gun moment, I was down here before I had like redone anything. It was like a, just kind of a basement that I would, uh, you know, like I, I did my DJ work down here and shit. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I essentially like, I didn't realize it, but I didn't have that awakening moment of like, what are you doing? Like, put this gun down. Get what? What's was this it whole... like curiosity or was it well, like? Well, so, okay. So, so I had, I had like around that moment, I don't know if this was like within weeks or whatever, but I had, had this other moment where that part of me did come on. It came online. Okay. Um, and I was, we, we were out having drinks. Uh, it was like probably two years ago now, but I was out with Shay, um, in like, did Shay know how you were feeling? So, no. So that's the thing is, is like the, the way that I am, I didn't share. Like I didn't, I've, I've, in my eyes, in my head, I've raised myself since I was nine years old. That's yeah. how my, so I am very, I, I have to do it on my own. Mm-hmm. Like I have to keep it in my head. And I, I mean, I'm way better at this sort of thing now, but yeah. right. I feel um, you. I but, feel you but the but same I, way. Yeah, dude. I, I had this, had this moment where essentially we were drinking too much and I felt a little tipsy. Um, and I got behind the wheel and I literally grabbed a, b- a bag of blow out of my wallet uh-huh. and I did a bump like in front of Shaylee. And like, like she's, she's known that I've done it before. Like she's, yeah, she's yeah, lets yeah. me live my life, whatever. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I, I did it and like, it was like right away. It was like this moment of like this fucking light that flew into the car. That was like, a, what do you, you just made this normal. What are you doing, bro? Mm. You just, you're sobering up mm. with a quick bump because you had too many drinks. So you could take your girl. And it was like looking at her, like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? And you and, love her. So that, yeah, you know, dude, and, and that and, disappoints and, you. Yeah. And, and so, and so I think that was like the avalanche. Um, and that was like, that was a little bit before Halloween. Um, and, and I had like a really bad, like emotional breakdown, um, after a Halloween show. Yeah. And it was, but it was instead of doing it on my own, which I think that night would have been like a very not safe night, me versus me sort of situation, mm-hmm. um, where, I like texted Shaylee or I called her like before I left the gig and I was like, you have to stay up, please like stay up. Shit. And that was something I didn't have. I didn't have that thing that was like willing to make the call and be like a weak man. And like be that, like, you this is how I'm feeling. Yeah. And then I was like, you got to stay up because like, I'm not doing good. And then essentially like that night I got home and it was like, I had to leave, uh, I had to leave for a show out of town in the morning or something. But I was like five hours, four hours of just like bawling in the shower of just like, um, just being vulnerable and like shedding. And like literally there's a moment where I was just like naked and she's just like stroking my hair and I'm just like bawling. It was like this crazy healing moment. That's for that me for moment, sure. man. Yeah. That's so, that so she, juice. I mean, she's, yeah, she brought me back to life in so many ways. But um, yeah, so I had like that defining moment. Essentially my spirituality, like there was nothing like that there for me. Like I always had this like savage, like you can do it. Like mm-hmm. you can learn anything you have, you can, but there was never this like, like the spirituality that awoken me was not something that I got back from childhood. It, it's a new, it's something new that I had never felt before on this. I can human definitely experience. relate to that. I yeah. can definitely relate to that. And I'm so grateful for anybody that's listening that I have had the opportunity to look into that side, you know, because I feel like you can only get so fulfilled from the other end of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. And I can tell talking to you, especially about that story. And thank you for sharing that. That's very personal stuff. And it yeah. means a lot that you're able to come on here and be vulnerable. And yeah. I feel like I a feel lot like of people. You. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people have felt like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so the fact that we're able to have a moment that is so painful and hurts so much yeah. But I can relate because like the crying thing, I used to like, I'm such an emotional guy, bro. Mm-hmm. Such an emotional guy. Would you hide crying though? Like, I like would, in yeah, public? You know least, what like, I'd even do? Like, would you? I would like just avoid the situation completely because I knew that crying would be a symptom of it. Right, right, you right. You know, right, so right. like that would be the thing. But now like, not only do I cry about like happy moments, but like when I'm sad and I got to let something out, like you got to let that shit out. Mm-hmm. And whether that's you walking into a field and screaming at the top of your lungs or you sitting by yeah. yourself and crying, I urge you yes. to literally, especially for men. Yeah, bro. Because we feel like we are not allowed no, to at all. No, not at all. And like it definitely, I think, 
brings anger holding that stuff in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know like yeah. for sure i just know that i'm in such a more peaceful spot and like less what, what, spiteful did you did you have a moment like um you want to talk about that what was your moment yeah. what was it like what what led up to this too I, like what was your life like i've had many moments so i've always struggled with addiction mm-hmm. my whole entire life um and i always was missing something i didn't know what it was but uh you know the other things that made people happy didn't make me happy. And I always wondered why. Like, you know how sometimes when, like, a group of your friends would be like, oh, we're, like, going to this game. And then, like, you're like, okay, and you go to the game. But at the game, the whole time you're just thinking about, like, leaving and doing something mm-hmm. that's really, you know what I you're mean? You're watching them have fun. Exactly. Exactly. And so, for me, like, I could be in a room full of people and still feel alone. And, like, it didn't matter no you know, significance as far as the things that I was getting or anything like that made any difference. So like we were talking about before, I want a solution. And my solution was drugs, Mm -hmm. you know? And Mm -hmm. because when I put them in my body, I didn't have to feel those raw, real emotions. Mm -hmm. Well, and how do you get good at a social situation? You put a little lubricant in it. You put a little alcohol, a little little booze, whatever, you know? Exactly, exactly. And then you start to feel okay and you hang on to that feeling. So you're like, okay, I can just feel okay anytime I want. It's it's a store away, you know, or the dope man's house away or whatever the case may be. It's all the same thing. So I had many breakdown moments. I've been to residential rehab you know and then i've gotten out and made the same mistakes Mm -hmm. you know and so this last time around though and just growing up and i've had a ton of those breakdown moments but what's helped me now is literally trying to have an ego death because i feel like my using was always out of ego bro for you to like head on say like i I need to have an ego death like that's savage that's i I mean mean, it's a it's a painful confusing like damn especially for men yeah because you you publicly too (laughs) yeah 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 exactly i mean in like and what i mean by it was based off egos my using is you're self-absorbed literally when i am in addiction I'm only thinking about making myself feel better. How self-absorbed can you fucking get? Right. You know what I mean? And when nowadays when I wake up and I get a workout and I get to go to work and I get to make sure our situation's handled and when my mom is having a breakdown, I get to be there for her. That's what I'm high off of. Epic, yeah. You know, like that's the shit where it's a real feeling and it's not one that you can buy. Yeah. It's not from an external source. Yeah. It's something that like only, only you being meticulous and um, present in your own life can bring. And I really want to share this too, because, okay, so this is how the last three years looked for me, Jake. Okay. Yeah. Lay down. Three years ago, I got sober for real, for real. I got on an airplane Mind you, I was in my career excelling very, very well in my career, okay? Yeah. Uh, but using heavily everything, anything, okay? Numbing it out, yeah. Numbing it out. I made the decision to get on a plane one morning, leave my career that I had spent years building, and fly to my sister's house where she was at at the time in San Francisco and detox on a couch, okay? And... Good for you, man. You know, and I had already been to residential, so I'm like, you know what? I know what I need to do. I just need to, I just need to do it, you yeah, know? Because, yeah. like, I've never felt like I didn't know what I needed to do. I always just chose to do differently. And so I go to my sister's house, and, you know, I stay there for, like, 30 days, and I'm talking to my boss and shit, and he's like, luckily, and, of course, when you're selling a lot for a company, they're going to take you back no matter what, you know what I mean, kind yeah, of thing. Good but like, did, yeah. But... Also, they were there for me. You know, they knew what I was going through and stuff like that. So I came back, long, long story short, I came back. I had a lot of people telling me, you need to not go back to this career. It's very stressful. I think it's a big part of the reason why you're using. I contacted many people that I respect to get their opinions. And uh, I decided to go back to the job. 
because I also know something that I want in my life and I'm not afraid to say it is massive financial stability Mm -hmm. because I understand what that can do for me and my family. And that's something I've always been attracted to. Now it's not my God before it was, Mm -hmm. you know, so I'm able to see differently through that. But so long, long story short, I stay sober for two years and a couple months. Right. And then me and JC, uh, we're at our house one night and I'm having like teeth problems, teeth problems, right? My fucking teeth are hurting. Okay. And I'm not being able to like shut my mouth. Cause I've like gotten some work done on my teeth. Right. And I'm feeling like, I can't believe I'm even telling you all shit, but um, we, hey, we can edit this out if you don't want to. No, 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 okay. no, no, no. I keep it. I like okay. it. Right. So I'm having like teeth problems and I had been sober for like two years and four months and my life looks great, bro. We just bought a new house. We just got engaged. You know, everything's going well. And now I'm not a salesman. I'm a sales manager. I got more freedom. I got time on my hands. But in that moment, I'm like, I deserve something. I deserve something. So I'm like, babe, and JC's a fucking writer. You know, she knows that drugs and substances aren't good for me. If I want to do something, she's going to let me do something even if she doesn't support it. Right. You know what I mean? So we hop in the car and drive to the weed store. Okay, I hadn't smoked weed in forever. <laughs> I'm going to be real honest. I've never been this honest about some, but we go back to the house and I'm thinking, fuck yeah, I'm going to get to smoke this weed and I'm going to feel better. Bro, I smoke the weed and start having like a fucking panic attack oh, because, no I, because I haven't smoked <laughs> no. in so long. But where I'm going with this is for, because now I've been clean and sober again, completely with no alcohol, no weed for like two months. But where I'm going with this is after I smoked that weed that night, Something happened where little by little, okay, then I started, then I told JC, I was like, all right, I'm just going to smoke like every night. I don't do it at work, so it's good, you know? So I was smoking every night and then we went to Italy, right? We went to Italy and then of course I'm flying overseas, so I don't have weed on me Mm -hmm. and I'm compulsive and an addict. So I'm like, all right, I think I should drink, JC. Oh shit, okay. You know? And so... I drink in Italy and then I go home and then I look back and I'm like, geez, man, it's been like four months since I decided to do this. And I've drank like 120 out of the 120 days. Like this is not, not good. Mm, Right. So that thing pulled me in again, didn't it? Exactly. And where I was going with this is your question. You said, did you have a breakdown? And so I did. And it was such a fucking blessing, man, because I got to realize that that just isn't for me. You know, and if I am doing it, it's just, I take away my God shots, I feel like. Mm, You know, it's kind of this weird thing where I put myself in a position to where I miss a lot of things that I see when I'm sober. You know? I feel that. Yeah, so it was kind of like one of those things. And now these past couple of months, like, it was just kind of crazy. Like, COVID happened, and... I had the opportunity to start doing music and I started looking at my job differently that allowed me to not have such bad feelings around it because like I knew what purpose it was serving, you know? And so that was kind of like my in the shower moment, you know? And I cried and I told JC, I was like, you do not deserve this you know because like you know how it is like maintenance shit like i i go hard bro like i go hard so like if i'm drinking or something like it's is there's gonna be some throw up some fucking you know some nights where i just pass out on the couch like we'd go to see we went to see uncut gems that movie with adam sandler all right and I go in the movie theater and I'm passed out 30 minutes later, you know, just from smoking yeah. and drinking. You know. Yeah. So, so are you going to enjoy the movie or are you going to like try to find a place to get fucked up at? Exactly. And it's yeah. like at a certain point, it just for me, I know it's not what I'm supposed to be doing. It's not what my purpose calls for. Right. Just feels right. Yeah. It just feels right to be sober. Like it feels like I'm my true being. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. I think it's a, uh, it's so cool of you to talk about it on a podcast too, because it's such a a weird thing. Like it's so uncomfortable. It's like like with me when I talk about it, I'm like, dude, like, you know, I'm I know that I'm supposed to be doing these things, but there's also this part in me that I'm like, well, like I also have to like work. Like I have to like like do like people don't want to like hire a DJ that they know did these things. You yes. know what I mean? Like yes. and it's it's but it's I think what's more important than me being able to 
put on a perfect shirt and tie and, and make that appearance so I can get corporate gigs. I think what's more important is helping motherfuckers out in the music and creative world who are killing themselves. So, so you know, like the fact that you see that means everything. Yeah, I got to do means it. everything, yeah. man. And it's so true. And guess what? If you can't be truthful in your environment, maybe it's the wrong environment. Yeah. You know, that's what I asked myself because I had those same thoughts, especially in such a public thing like sales, Yeah. you know, and then to switch directions. And like, even when I made my music page, I had the owner of my dealership's daughter follow it. And you hear yeah. what's in my stuff. So, of course, my first thought is like, oh, right. shit, you know, oh, that's so, that we do. We get so boxed in with that. Sort yeah. Of stuff. You yeah. Know, we had this reminds me. This is a good um when it comes to like making like a music page or like an artist page, like I have a friend who is like, she's been doing fitness forever and um, she like, doesn't feel like she's like the most perfect trained personal trainer. Like she doesn't have like that look as all, all the other girls. Um, so she feels like she doesn't want to post as much on this. Like she has a side page, an Instagram page okay. um, that she wants to be motivational. Like, like, Hey, I ran these sets of stairs or like, Hey, I had some struggle with my, you know, I, I had an argument with myself about my diet this morning. Um, I won though. I ate this instead, you know, those sort of things yeah. like just being real with people and motivating people on where she's at and stuff. But, um, she, I forget exactly what it was, but it was essentially some form of like real fitness people followed her or something like that. Uh -huh. And so she like all of a sudden feels like, well, I don't want to like, I, I don't I mean I don't know shit compared to you guys so like then we feel caged in and boxed in by like what our image needs to be like what yes. what we're posting like yes. like if you had like like you're gonna be a lot less afraid to be creative and just like put out whatever wherever you're actually at and whatever your actual thoughts are if you know that people aren't gonna like try to rip you apart for it right afterwards or it's, potentially it's crazy and that's such a good point because with people following you like you were talking about before the they once the they tune in then you might start doing stuff differently, you know? And, it, and it's hard, it's a hard line to walk, but I feel like you have to just embody yourself, you know? And you have to, and it's a muscle to build, right? Right. Like I don't feel like all of a sudden you should just get your phone up and be like, this is how I feel about this and that and put it on your Instagram story. But, it, but it's, uh, it's saying that one thing that you didn't want to say, but you know it's true to your core right. once, and then it kind of builds it up for the next time you're like, I am going to post this, even though it's kind of provocative. Right, right. You like know? I've said it, like what are they going to say now? Like it's like, yeah. like you, you, whatever you have to say is just about that thing. It's you obviously don't have me figured out. Yeah. But it's, again, we, you know, we do get boxed in again just with, like we can't represent ourselves in any of these social media shit. Like we can't like, like e even if you're like this is my music page like it still doesn't represent your music no like it, there's no. you know you, you're pushing your music on it you're you're sharing your music there yeah. but it doesn't represent you or your music or this side of you or like dude we can't we can't summarize a human being with one page you can't and so many times i'll consume content and then i'll meet somebody and i'll be like okay you know what i mean like it's it's different yeah you know in the best way possible because guess what? Just because you created something this way doesn't mean that you're bound to it. Right. You know, like I'm, I feel like I'm genuinely a nice guy. You might listen to my track and be opinionated about a certain type of thing and be like, the fuck? Right. You know what I mean? Or, or think ego or think, you know what I mean? So it's like, no, that's how I express myself. Right. You know what I mean? That's how I express myself. When I'm in my zone, that's how I feel. Right. I am giving you that feeling. Not to mention, I understand the law of attraction. I'm speaking things into existence. Yes, on, you know what I mean? So it's like the, the, the juice is knowing that you can be you and the right people that the universe you, wants bro. around you. Dude, this podcast has shown me that crazy. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine you've had so many moments where you're just like, wow. Yeah, I'm just like, bro, like synchronicity i think like it just like like after the podcast we take the headphones off and there's like this moment where it's always like damn bro like i i don't know why of course there's that energy of just two people vibing of course there's that but there's also this feeling for me of like that's you okay yep that's you're doing that thing you do whatever that is you're doing it yep and you are on your purpose yeah it feels and, like that and you're bringing it out of people 
Hopefully, man. That's what I'm I want to do. I'm so grateful to be on this podcast. And, Thanks, bro. And to share truth, you know? Yeah. And like you are providing an opportunity for people to do that. And it is just amazing. Yeah, bro. A place to be human in a world where we're just trying to bite size each other. And we're yeah. trying to we're trying to like just point out each other through, to me, social media and just technology and the way that our world works now has got us a little fucked up, man. It it's does. Like, and, and it'll grab you and it'll, it'll tame your, it'll, it'll tease you with your bad wolf, you know, but like once you start feeding your good wolf, you can start saying like, oh, okay, I can help people in these cert- certain ways too. Exactly. And, it, and it's hard, right? Yeah. Right, Jake? It's hard. Yeah. Like, and, and we can sit here and talk about, okay, you know, you need to meditate, you need to just do it and shit like that, but it's hard. Like, it's hard. Jim Ron, a very successful entrepreneur that I've always followed, he said, Getting rich is easy. It's really easy because the things to get rich are very easy to do, but they're also very easy not to do. You know? Damn. (laughs) And when I hear rich, I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about health. I'm talking about peace of mind. I'm talking about being able to walk into a room and not be crippled, Right. right? Right. By the opinions of others. And I see it on my life on a daily basis, man. Like a couple nights ago, I had the pizza and the soda and I woke up and I'm like, fuck. Dude, I get more and more (laughs) like that nowadays. Yeah. And, and, but this was the cool thing about it is I took a step back and I'm like, okay, I've been doing so good on eating that putting something bad in me affected me this bad, you know? So like, it was cool to see that. And then I was like, okay, time to get back on the right track. Cause like, guess what? There's days when I wake up and I don't run or I don't lift or I don't listen to my motivational tape or when I come home and I've had a rough day at work, I take it out on my fiance and then I apologize after, yep. you know, and it's like those are character defects that are alive and well in me. Yeah. But those things that we do talk about help me greatly to fight those. Absolutely. Do you do you ever... I think that a huge thing that a lot of people, because I used to get caught up in it too, is the, the, give me a sec, I lost the train. No, you're good. Uh, Oh, oh, identifying ourselves with, oh, uh, I'm like losing it in and out. Identifying ourselves with that moment of like, so... So say you're like, I've been killing my diet for four weeks in a row. This is as long mm-hmm. as I've gone. I'm killing it. What's up? Like mm-hmm. I've been going to the gym and then you have that day where you're like off, like where you just don't feel it. You don't make it to the gym. You feel crappy. You, ha- you eat a whole bucket of ice cream, like whatever. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times I think what, what happens and what I would do too, um, in the bucket of ice cream things, huge overeating was such a huge thing for me too. Yeah. Just feeling so shitty after overeating. Like it's almost like you want to feel just the pain of overeating, not even the joy. That's but, uh, it. That's it. Is, yeah. Um, but it's, so what happens I think is we get caught right fucking here and we identify ourselves right here. We try to say like, oh, okay, this is who I am. Like I, oh, I fell off that diet. Like, wait, hold up. You just did this thing for 30 days and then you had one day where you fucked up or you two days where you fucked up and now you failed the whole thing. What are you talking about? Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. So that that spot right there where we try to identify ourselves and we try to say, this is who I am. I go, oh, woe is me. And our ego is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking You're stay inside. Shit. Eat more ice cream, fucker. Like yeah. stay in your cave. You're safe in there. You could just do this forever. You could do this forever. And then you got like, no ego. Fuck you, bro. Exactly. Like we did it. I'm back on track tomorrow. Like, yep. I'm back, and maybe the day after that, I'm gonna fall off again. But then the day after, because I know you gotta. It's again starting with your why. If your why is in alignment of mm-hmm. like, I know that I'm not doing this to see how many days in a row I can do it. I'm not doing it for these reasons that other people are saying. I'm doing it for like to see the edge of my health. Like I want to really learn about my health. So that's why I'm dieting and I want to feel my best. And yeah, I do feel pretty good. So let's explore more into that. Like, yeah, I had a day I slipped off, but I get to learn more about my body tomorrow when I feed it better. Yes, exactly. And you get to like see that doing those right things does make you feel good. Yeah. And doing those wrong things does, you know, and you get to like enjoy it all. Yeah. I remember like, you had a post one time. Gosh, this is from so long ago. I bet you're going to trip out that I remember this. I do, some people, for some reason, people hella remember my Facebook post. I'm, all, I'm very preachy on Facebook. Uh, bro, me? I don't even remember what platform it was on, but you were oh. talking about dieting and you said, uh, you said sometimes you just got to work out so you can eat the pizza. That's what you said. 
Mm. And I correlated that with Mm. a lot of different things than diet, you know, but stop being so hard. You don't have to abstain. Right. If you don't want to. And it goes back to what you're talking about with your why, you know, but like, don't beat yourself up about it. Right. You know, because like we want to get better, but you got to understand that sometimes genetically you're different than other people. It's going to take you longer. Yeah. That's just a fact. You know what I mean? Like, so we put ourselves in this box and, you know, we tee ourselves up and we say, oh, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to write this down and stuff like that. But like, don't let the detour totally cripple you, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and like allow yourself to be human and I feel like that's why for me like lately in my life I'm just trying to like show love man like I want to I want to support people you know and I want to tell people that they can do it and then really like put action behind them and like show them you know that like they can because I don't know even though like I had a rough upbringing and stuff like I always had people around me that were like you got something yeah you know you know and took took you a little bit for you to to listen to it fully eh? exactly well and also i liked kind of like that i i i don't know if i liked it that might be the wrong word i became accustomed to people knowing me as the like person who was like selling drugs and you know and like in the party scene and like kind of like defiant Mm, you know, I right. I became accustomed to that. And so I'm like, all right, well, fuck, people think it's what I am. I'm going to do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I feel like with me, it was like I was accustomed to like trying to be the rebel. Like I am the rebel in a lot of ways. Like I've always been, you know, wearing the crazy shit since I was young. I just love that. It's just because I, I like like different stuff than other people around me is what it is. But yeah. a lot of that, like I want to make sure everybody knows that like don't use the word we around me because I'm not like you guys. Like I want to yeah. make sure that's fucking prevalent. And yeah. That's, and you know, that's a beautiful place to be, but it's also a silly place to be when you don't like, you don't need to put yourself there. Like you could be like people in so many ways and that's beautiful too. You can be like them and be so different. Yeah, bro. You, you know, like yeah. that's, that's such a good perspective to have and it. It allows you to not miss other people's gifts and other people's perspectives, you know, yeah. and being able to learn from them. Cause I know like, when I do feel like that, it just makes me really shut off the outside world, yeah. you know? And it's okay to be unique, yeah, but not be so, this is the only way you should do it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, it's so hard to be understood in the first place. Like, that's what we're always, we're, oh, I want you to understand mm-hmm. me. And then there's also this, like, you don't understand, you'll never will though. Like, there's <laughs> yeah. that, but there's also like a, we can get you know same thing like with your homie we can get so trapped in our own heads of like like sometimes we think that our problems are like bro nobody thinks the crazy thoughts i do mm-hmm. like nobody fucking like no bro you don't know like the, we all think that we all think like no bro like like my thoughts are dark my you know my, my past you can't no mm-mm. like we all think that we're the mm-hmm. worst but you know there's eight billion fucking people on this planet and i'll, I'll bet you like within 10 of them they probably had similar feelings of within course 10, so. of course yeah like, and, and it's it's in the power thing about that is like discovering that that's like a truth like that's like bro don't strangle yourself don't 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 hold yourself down like that like let yourself go like let let yourself i guess let, let yourself be similar to people in in a sense of like yeah, I'm different and I have different emotions and I have different feelings and maybe I don't fit in. Maybe I'm the rebel. Maybe I'm like the outcast. Um, but I'm also human. And so millions and millions of humans have the same feelings as me because we can alienate, alienate ourselves because of our personality, because of our interests, because like, we, you know, we're the punk rock, we're the, mm-hmm. we're the defier, we're that guy. Um, but you don't have to alienate your, your human emotions. Like I'm the punk rock guy who is like, out of all these 8 billion, 8, 8 billion people, I'm the one who feels pain this much because yes. that's a real lonely place to put yourself. There's people out there who are like, hey, bro, I feel pretty similar. Maybe not the exact same, but it, it's a very, it's a huge relief when you could talk to other people, meet other people, learn about other people, um, listen to other people on like YouTube videos and lectures and stuff yes. who are just like, they talk about like the pain they're going through and you're like, fuck, man, maybe it's like, I'm going through like kind of similar pain and they seem to be okay. So like maybe it is going to be okay. And it brings a sense of not being alone. 
Yeah. So you know, important. like, and I feel like at the end of the day, everybody just wants to be validated. Yeah. You know, in a, totally. in a certain, in a certain circumstance. And that's why, like, it's so, it's troubling, you know, when, that's why I love the thing you did with the sweatshirts too in the suicide prevention, you know, is because right. like a lot of people just don't know where the resources are, you know? Right. Yeah. Cause we avoid it. We don't talk about it in the real world. That's the thing. Exactly. Like, like when you say the word anxiety, like, you know, five years ago, it's like you, you murmur it and then you like, what, you get a pamphlet from your counselor and that's <laughs> yeah. how you know about it. Exactly. But now it's like kids who are like 16 years old are like, here's what I know about anxiety. Like it's uh -huh. a different world. We're talking about it. We're like, Hey, we got feelings as humans. We don't got to deny them. We got to figure them out. We got to learn about them. No. in the way that you really expand in something is by putting attention on it, mm -hmm. you know? And like, I don't want to wake up and see it on a TDN. I'd rather you pass out a sweatshirt that somebody calls the number to, you know? Yeah. And, those types of things, no matter how big or how small, whether it's you seeing somebody get shit on and walking up to them and being like, you're, you're good, man. Like, I'm here for you. Yeah. You know? Like, We've done with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that, that little moment right there, not only does it do something for them, but it takes me out of myself. And that's an important thing, man, service. Like, I'm sure you've stumbled across this. Like, you like Tony Robbins, don't you? Love Tony Robbins, Yeah, I feel like man. there was a moment where, where Jay said, like, uh, JC was, like, uh, said compared you to Tony Robbins. Like, he's he's my Tony Robbins. Or he's, like, going to be the next Tony Robbins. Something like that. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, yes. Yes. Um, and, dude, and he, he talks about, it seems like something that before I wouldn't give the time of day. But now I understand. I get it. And he talks about service. He's like, go out and like do your thing, figure out your position, blah blah blah, and then serve. Like the way he says, it just rings in my head. Got it. Serve. Got it. And it's, it's, you know, synchronicities happen, man. Like little stuff starts popping up. You know, like it does. when you when you're helping other people out, like in from a place of like not saying that you're perfect and that you're like. I know exactly all your problems and I can, I, I know how to help you completely, but just like giving people that open space or serving or helping people out or giving people a hug, yeah. just being human to people. Hitting a like. Hitting a Hitting like. Hitting a like. Hey, I'm nervous to share this. Like, I hope you guys enjoy it. It's taken me a while. Here it is. Like, hit a like if you really support your friend, man. Like, Bro, and I've been so persistent on this and it honestly is crazy. You know, and it's funny because some of the things that we do to help other people, like, make me feel so good yeah you know what i mean like yeah. it, like in almost like a selfish way but it's so cool because you can be there providing for somebody and then it yeah. gives you that like real sense of fulfillment yeah it's crazy that that is that kind of feels selfish almost like i know it's so, i know damn you, damn you society for letting the word <laughs> selfish sneak into there because i get that bro like, yeah. you're like i don't want to talk about it though like, yeah. Like, yeah 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 but it's like i want I want to be there in a part of it. Like I feel like in high school, I was so shut off to like being there for people that weren't like instantly in my clique or thing. Mm -hmm. And and I've always been a very loyal person, you know? So like, I felt like, Oh, if you're not with me and my friends, then fuck you, right, <laughs> you right. know, like that. But that's like a small town mentality. I think that's just something that comes with. I think so too. Towns. But then I started seeing it, Jake, like in my career, like I'd be at work and I'd see somebody come in to buy something. And it's like, oh, you fucking definitely were not how you should have been to that person. Oh, you man, know? Yeah. And, and so it's like a full spectrum thing that's taught me a lot about life. And it's like, I don't want to be that fucking guy. And deep down, I'm not that guy. Mm. But that's an ego that's coming into place and making you think that you're better than somebody else or that you shouldn't involve yourself. So like I take a lot of gratitude now in like going the extra length to reach out to people that I may not have been the best to, you know, and like support them and what they're doing. And like, and guess what? Love it. At the end of the day, like we got to do that for us, like now I want to give with no expectation. 
I don't want to like your post in hopes that you like mine. Yeah, yeah. I want to like your post to let you know that I'm here and I see you and I know that what you just put together to to put out to everybody takes work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I want to validate that I'm proud of you for putting that work in. Hell yeah, man. You know? Yeah. And so like that's where that's the space that I want to be in, yeah. you know? And you know what? Naturally, the world's going to reciprocate. It's it's a law. Mhm. It's just a mm-hmm. law, you know? Like mm-hmm. you, there's no way around it. There's certain things that happen no matter what. And I've been on the horrible side of that too. <laughs> yeah, bro. You're you know? human after all. Yeah. You're human, bro. Yeah, for I'm, sure. I'm glad that you're in such a, a positive space um, in such like an empowering space coming into music. Like it's so, you know, if I think about like who I'd listen to and like the, when I was younger, I got so much inspiration without even knowing it from just listening to motherfuckers. Like a lot of times, like, yeah, maybe it's future. Maybe they're rapping about some crazy shit that like mm-hmm. doesn't really relate to my little white kid life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like it's it's given me like, like for me, when I can listen to like Earth Gang, if you know who they are, like when they're just just practically falling asleep on the beat with their voice and just, <laughs> yeah. and they're just getting there. They're, you're like, what? You are still like when you when you do those things in your lane it gives other people permission to do them in their lane so it's like like even if you were like if you came out and you're like i'm the most motivational hip-hop uh, artist that there is like if that was your thing like you uh-huh. that's your thing people who don't even really care about the motivational side of things still could fuck with your shit if, in in ways that relate to them because you're doing it, you're 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 fully doing the thing that only you can do. You're yes. being a, a pink flower can only be a pink flower. So yes. the red flower is like I'm gonna be the reddest red flower I can be. I love seeing you pink flower. Exactly, you know? exactly, and that's it's why I think it's, it's so important too to not be the red flower if you're the pink flower. Yeah, bro. Yeah, get, get it straight. I mean, yeah. explore like what what can the red flower teach you? Exactly. What can, the pink, what can that blue one like? Oh shit, that one mixed purple and blue. That's incredible. I know that that's not me. That doesn't represent me, but like mm-hmm. I, I can learn from it. I can learn about myself from them learning about them. And appreciate the color, no, even though it's not you. That's what it's about anyway. Music, yeah. appreciating the color. That was the most like full circle. Like, I somehow, know. <laughs> that was like so on the outside of the, the universe, but also right in it somehow. It was. I don't know if people are going to follow that part, but if they do, you're here with us. Yeah, uh, exactly. I felt it though when, yeah. we, when it was coming I'm, off. I'm glad you're on the same page. Yeah. Um, so I want to make sure that, so you're starting this music thing. Um, it's something that you're just, you're putting your soul into. I think it's super awesome. The timing for everything is great. I'm glad you hit me up. Um, I want to, what's, what's your, what's your thoughts? Like, like, what do you, you know, the world is crazy as hell right now. Like that's, that's no doubt. And so like, I don't, don't, don't give me like, here's what I'm gonna do next month and this month. Like, like, but where's your head at with this music thing? Like, what do you, what do you want to accomplish? Like what, what, what's it, what's in it for you right now? So my intention with music further than the fact that I love it is I know that the best way for me to channel my voice is through my music. Uh, I feel like people's gifts, they come in a sense where a part of it feels natural, right? Mm-hmm. And so for me, music feels natural. And all these serious things that are going on right now in the world, we're able to be a voice for them. And do it in a way where it's creative and where people like to listen, you know? And like on that first thing I did, the What's Poppin' remix, like Mm -hmm. what you know about a household that resembles a riot. That's one of the lines in there, you know? Oh, timing even. That's great. Yeah. I wrote that before this happened. That's what I'm saying. Like how it just works out like that. Yeah. What you know a household that when I was 13, an older kid told me, try this. That's the next bar, you know. Ma, why is stepfather acting violent? Like, these are all real parts of my life. But guess what? I put it on the What's Poppin' beat, and there ain't no space in it, and it sounds hard when you hear it, right? So it's that coming together and being able to speak a truth and have people go, okay, and have a good time to it. Make it musical. Yeah, but there's that one kid who's in the car who's like, I'm not the only person sitting in the yeah. living room while my dad fucks my mom up. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for him, he's like, okay. Cool, man. I got chills just thinking about like, 
<laughs> no doubt, dude. Just you, hip hop in in music does that for so many kids, man. Mm-hmm. For so many kids, it did it for me. Yeah, that's why I want to do it. When I listen to Eminem, I go into a different state. Mm-hmm. That's what like, and I'm so protective of him. I, right, I am, bro. I'm so protective of him. Like it's bad, bro. It's real bad, Every, dude. I mean, the real ones are. You yeah, know? you know what right. I mean. Like, and because he brought something, he brought something to me. Like that, that he was so connected with his truth, and his truth was so horrible. But he was able to put that out into the world, you know. And like, that's what I want. And here's the thing. Like, also. Like, I don't want to just do that. And that's why, like, I showed you the what's popping. But then after I showed you the big mad, Mm because the big mad, it's like we out here making people mad because we popping. You know what I mean? Like, and and I'll be on that type of shit, too, because sometimes, like I was talking about, I feel like that. Yeah. I wake up and I'm like, we we out here. Right. You know what I mean? And so, like, I want to give you both and what i really want to do is be able and this is something that i think about a lot is be able to put myself in a position to where you ain't got to go to work mom like that's what i think about you know or like taylor you get to be sitting backstage when i get off stage with a hundred bitches like i know you'd love to do <laughs> she should be, she'd be so supportive uh, oh dude she, she is amazing like she is one of the biggest gifts in my life, Jake. Yeah, you look, guys have a great relationship. I love seeing your guys' relationship as brother and sister. That, that is, is my that is my heart, man. Yeah. Like I did an Instagram live the other night and we did like this freestyle thing and the turnout for it was amazing and it was so cool and I was so grateful for how it turned out. But it's like when I and she was sitting right next to me, you know, we're in it and we're playing beats and we got a bunch of people over at my house and everybody's drinking and smoking weed. That's one thing I want to get clear to. Like I, I threw a little party the other night. I bought all the alcohol and the weed. Like I want people to do what they so want to do. Feel still pretty solid. Like you, you're not like I, I know where I'm at. You guys be where you need to be at. You, I'm good. That's people solid, are like, bro. you want to hit it? People are you? I'm like, no, I'm cool, man. Yeah. Like I, I went through my shit, man. Like I still got a, know yourself. Bro. I still got a zip in the cabinet that you guys can mess with from the mistakes I was making yeah, a couple right. months ago. <laughs> But it's like back to what I was saying about Taylor is like when I look over at her and like I just am like, man, this is my person and it makes me want to do better. You know, like when I bought my house, you know what was one of my big thoughts? Hmm. No matter what happens with my sister, she'll have somewhere to go. That's epic, bro. And she'll be taken care of. That's great. You know what I mean? And it's like that's the stuff that I that I get off on today. Was it was it like when you guys were growing up, were you and Taylor pretty tight? Like well, yeah. cuz how how big is your age difference? Like just 4 years. years. It's 4 years. 4 years. Yeah, that's that's solid that you guys were able to like keep a pretty close close relationship. Yeah. We like yeah, man, we were like on the like she was the person who was covering my ears when we were sitting on the stairs listening to chaos. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, like right, right. and then she's also the person that would like get pissed and you know fucking you know like start hitting me with a bad you yeah, know what you're I mean? Still so, brother and sister, exactly, bro. Exactly. So it's like she's just been there and it's there's something, Jake, about pain, you know, that creates magical things. Yeah. You know, whether it's art or your music. And uh, we've been through a lot of pain together. Yeah. And, it's, and she can, you can be comfortable knowing it and knowing she's going to support you with it. But like, she, there's also that like hype up. Like, it's like, you know, I, I talk about when I work with musicians, there's this, they know what each other is going to play because they can look at each other and say with their eyes, like, I'm going in to this. And then you're going to, you're going to accept me with that. And it's like, yeah, okay, cool. We're doing exactly. it. And like, what, what I, you know, what I imagine, I don't know, but with you and your big sis, it's probably like a, hey, like, I'm going to feel this. I'm going to go in there. I got to talk about this now, especially with hip hop, right? And like, like, I'm going to go in here and your sister's looking at you like, all right, I got you. Like, I've been there. I know what you're saying. You got to say it. We got to yep, do it. Yep, you know? exactly. I imagine something like that. And, you know, some people need, you need a homie who's like, fuck yeah, bro, do it. Or you need like a sister or sibling or just somebody to just say like, you got this. But with you, it's this super, I mean, that, that's incredible. I think that's so awesome, man. I'm, I'm super grateful. And I think, you know, something for the viewers too is it's like, as much as you need that relationship, like you need that person who says you can't too, you know? Mm. Like when, at least for me, I can only speak myself, but like, I love it both because I want to be driven and 
and when people doubt me, I get very driven. I'm a very competitive person, you know? So like, that's why I was great in sales is because you put me in an environment with 10 other people and now we're gonna see through action who's gonna come out on top, right? you know? Right. And so I like that end of the spectrum too. Especially when you're the young one too. Like, it, did you deal with that in, in sales? Like where you were on the lower end of the spectrum so you felt like you had to maybe work harder for respect when you're selling when you're selling cars and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And coming from a sense too of like always wanting certain things, you know, and always wanting to provide stuff and then actually finding a legal way to get there. In my head, I'm like, there's no way you can't go 199% on this. Mm. You know? Right. Because it it gives you that, it gives you that, feeling that you can make something happen you know and like i just know being involved in negative ways to make money and things like that like there's just no end result to it you know so once i found something where it's like okay i can be proud of this you know but then here also something i wanted to talk about there came a point too where i let that become my full identity you know and and that what do you mean that wasn't fully who i was right like for me don't get don't get me wrong. I love people. I love sales. Um, I have a buddy who is in insurance, who is not happy, not making what he should. Uh, took me like four months on golf courses and shit to convince him to come work for us. But like now he works for us and he's got a place in Kalama and like he just got a new girl and he's happy as hell Good and him, he's man. thriving oh, yeah. and he just got one of the biggest paychecks he's ever gotten. And like Great. that shit to me, seeing that all the way through, I love that, but I like music more. Mm, okay. And you know okay. what my biggest thing is, is ownership, right? Like, I urge anybody who's, you know, currently found a way to make a good financial living to take that and find something you really, 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 because I really love sales, bro. I really do, but not as much as I love music, right. you know? So like, I got to take that money and put it into my music mm -hmm. and chasing my full dream because for a second I had the thought of, well, fuck, maybe, maybe this is it. Maybe I just have the house and I'm the sales manager and, you know, I have a family and, and that thought scares the hell out of me. Yeah. So when you got to be true to yourself there and know like, you know, cause a lot of people would say like, you got it, you're doing perfect. You get, you have succeeded and you're great. But if it doesn't feel like that in your heart, bro, that's where you got to be able to say like, okay, like wh where do I need to shift some shit? You know? Exactly. We, we, it's it, getting caught living someone else's life, you know, like, you couldn't have said it better. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, but it's so easy to do, man, that we're, we're kind of built. We're trying to, like, it's, uh, Alan Watts talks about this, this, you know, in the Western world, you grow up as a kid and you're like, here's what you want to do. You want to go the first 12 year or, uh, K through 12. You want to, you know, you want to graduate high school and that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Come on, graduate high school. Right afterwards, you got to get prepared to go to college. Right after college, you got to make sure you get the house payment and like, what do you put in your 401k? Yes. Like, so these, it's, it's this structure that's not, it's not bad. It works for billions and millions, millions of people. Mm -hmm. But like, if you're living that life and you're like, you know, it, like at what point in ninth grade, as you're just going through, do you be like, gosh, what, like, what am I walking towards? Or what, what am I, what goals am I chasing? What carrot am I trying to get? That's like right in front of me. Like, is this even my carrot? You know, it's, is it for you? Yeah. Is it for me? Is it for you? You know, cause it's like, just cause college worked for somebody else, you know, doesn't mean it's going to work for you, but I still went, you know why? Mm -hmm. Cause I thought it was, I was supposed to do. Right. But then my feeling while I was there wasn't correlating, you know, right. and I've always been in tune with my feelings, you know, so like for the person who's sitting through class every day and then going home and getting fucked up all night just so your parents can see you walk four years later. I'm telling you, they'll be more happy. They might be more, they might come at you at the time when you yeah. say, fuck this, I'm going to go rent a little yeah. apartment with four of my homies and we're going to do this. But let me tell you something, in 15 years, 
when you're not a bitter alcoholic because yeah. of what you put yourself through and sitting in a cubicle and you're able to look your mom in the face and tell her that I love you and I'm okay inside, they'll appreciate it. Yes. You know, and like, Beautiful. I felt like I owed that to myself, you know, as far as like, and now I've never had a better relationship with like my family and my mother. And like, now I get to do my unorthodox things, whether it be music or going into a different route than college and like show other people that they can, you know, I, yeah, bro. I feel like that's what it's about at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, and it, everything we learn gets us to where we're at too, obviously. Like, like you, you've gotten so much from what you've done. Like you've really sharpened your work ethic. Like all the, you know, all the sales books that you've read are going to cross right over to everything you know right now and everything that, you know, in, in the music world that you're going to come across, like the things that you learned are, um, you, your tool belt's full, you know? So funny you say that because I was telling JC the other day, I was like, such a blessing though that I did go into this career because it taught me to shamelessly promote. Yeah, and that's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to do. Yeah. You feel weird about it. Yeah. You know, and that is actually what I want to call my record label when that point comes is shameless promotions. I like that. Yeah. That's tight. Because it's just so like me, you know what I mean? Like, and I've, I don't know, do you feel like things have always, uh, happened easy for you as far as uh as far as maybe like career in djing and things like that um you know kind of yeah yeah i kind of had like it almost felt like momentum that just got going Uh uh-huh um I don't know. For me, I, for many, many years, I didn't really have a solid why. Like I didn't really like, honestly, so with DJing, like it'd be that same typical, like people be like, oh bro, we got to get you in clubs. We got to get you in blah, blah. Like uh, you could play at festivals. And there's always, there's that part in me that's like, oh, that'd be so great. But like, I couldn't tell you why not. And I couldn't tell you what else I wanted more, but I was like, that's not my thing. Like that's not, I don't really care to like, be the number one headliner like i there was this thing where i was getting a lot of momentum with it but i wasn't really and it's so hard to explain i I was reaching goals without really having them to aim at yeah Um, you were gradually just moved because people i think people move towards you yeah you know what i mean i think people move towards you and they see you in a certain light yeah you know and a lot of the time too people can see you in a light that uh like you just talked about, maybe your intentions are different, mm-hmm. you know, but they see how capable you are right? and they see how inspiring you are in your look and the way that you care about certain things. And they're like, okay, like Jay could really do this. Like he could. Right. Yeah. Know? Well, so, and that's, you know, in, in more recently, like with my like spiritual awakening was finally like letting myself do it. Like I had a friend who like literally it was through a text and somehow the text of all the nice things people say to me that I just try to dis, I try not to dissociate and deflect mm-hmm. um, cuz I I block love it's like a thing that I have to work on is I don't yeah. let myself feel these compliments that people give me sometimes but I had a I had a friend who uh uh it, it was right after my birthday speech a couple of years ago I did this birthday speech essentially saying like I'm not going to kill myself and I'm going to like literally try to be whatever I'm going to I be. saw like, it I loved it yeah and and so and I I pretty much had a friend um who wasn't there but it was like Essentially, she just said, um, like, I know you're going to do something someday. I always thought that. And it was like this simple, like, I always thought that. And then it was like, a, oh, yeah, bro, people have been telling me that, like, in their own words every day. Uh-huh. And I didn't believe it. Uh-huh. And I didn't, because I was like, well, I don't want that. Instead of, like, looking at, like, what the fuck do I want? How do I want to, like live when I'm on my deathbed, like, what do I want to say that I have done? And that's like where my image, that's like where my head is. Like I'm looking from the end of my life. Like, what do I need to, what what do I want to make sure I come across? What do I want to make sure I accomplish? What do I, what, what ground do I want to walk across while I'm alive? Um, and I think in, in thinking about you, you were asking if, if it seems like, it seems like things came easy in a sense. That speech you did was after the shower moment. 
Yes. Okay. A couple of days after. Okay. okay. Yeah. I was, I, oh man, I was like on cloud nine. I was like in, in the middle of a mystical experience still, yeah. I feel like, man. You were getting some crazy. relief. Yeah, it was so great. I, I, I had something in me that I didn't have before. Um, but I, w w with DJing. And you can see that in that video. Yeah, bro. You and can, I, you and can see that in that video. You know, that was a super uncomfortable. Like I was really confident to post that because I was like, I don't care like at all. Yeah. But then like watching it, I was like, oh God, like it was just so <laughs> yeah. uncomfortable to watch for me. Yeah. Um, yeah like, it's like it's, that. It's like, you know how like when you record something and you hear your voice, like sometimes as little as you hear your voice on like uh -huh. a snap search and you're like, fuck, that's how I sound. Right. <laughs> you know, bro, it's so funny. We do that shit to ourselves. Uh, yeah. So like, bro, that's just what everybody else hears and they don't fucking hate you. No, and the, the only person that's thinking that is you. Yeah. That's how overcritical we are yeah. as human beings. Our mind can be such a trap like that. And it's insecurity. Yeah. I, but um, I love where you're going. Keep going with that. Yeah. Well, well. so just just with DJing, I, I, I really, I wanted to almost remain in this like spot of like not being understood, I think. Like I, I almost didn't like when people understood me, but mm -hmm. also I'm crying to be understood, right? Yeah, it's just yeah, complicated. Yeah. But uh, so for, for DJing, it started with a, a, like a love, like I had a moment where I was on, uh, um, I was at, at the gorge and I was like sitting on the hill and I was watching Cascade and I was by myself, like my friends were just doing their own thing. It was a cool, like I'll see you guys in a little bit sort of situation. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it was this like, man, I could do this. Like I can make people feel like this. It wasn't like a, I could be the one on stage. It, that, it wasn't like that for me, but it was okay. like looking around at the people, not only right in front of the stage, but I'm, I'm so far away from the stage. I'm looking at the people right next to me. Like, the, you know, the people in front of the stage who are raging and like they know every song, like they're feeling it, but also like this person who's never heard this song before and they're just on the grass experience in their life, they're feeling something right now. And yeah. I was like, man, like I could, I could like do something to make people feel like that. So I got into DJing then. Um, and I kept like following that. No like, way. My that's how you, that's how you started. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's how my that's, love for it got that's in. That's fucking yeah. cool. And I, um, well, and then, and then after that, like within a couple of months, like synchronicity, I met Kelly St. Ange, if you know who that is. Yeah. Daddy, um, and, like we, we kicked it off we like vibed over like bass nectar like somebody like who i like nobody in town at that point i didn't have any friends who knew this kind of music so mm -hmm. we were just we just vibed and then within a couple of days he literally had me come over to his house to show me the ropes of like all right here's the play button here's the fader like the ropes of djing the very no first shit. and and he, he gave me that opportunity kelly saying that was i'm was super grateful for that but so rounding out what i was saying i was like i was aiming at it it wasn't that it was like super easy um i don't know but i feel like i did always want to give the image that it was super easy like i feel to me it felt like i didn't have anything ever figured out at all mm -hmm. but like there was this image that i knew was important that i knew I, I had to make sure that everybody thought that i had it figured out and i think that that is a lot of born from like you know fending for myself when i'm younger it's like you don't you don't you're not going to show the weaknesses you're not yeah. gonna like w when i would go check on my resume at pack sun before i worked there I'd, I'd leave my backpack outside the store like they know that i that i brought my backpack and i walked from school and like i don't have a ride maybe but like i left my backpack out there because the image and Perception. i go and check in my and i check on the resume that way so yeah um i don't know it, it just and you start to understand that stuff through survival mechanisms. Right. You know, for yeah. sure. Like you definitely do. So I, I resonate with that a ton yeah. when you say stuff like that. Uh, or, hey, mom, have you seen our car drop me off two blocks away? And I'll walk there. Yeah. Bro, bro my, my thing was uh, what I would do like every night is I would, and they would know I'm lying, I'm sure. I would I would be like, oh, yeah, my sister's on her way or my, my mom's on her way. And it's 930. And then once I see my manager pull out the parking lot, then I start walking the three miles home. Yeah. Like that was my life. That's just yeah. what it, it's, it's, and it wasn't like this, like really sa sound sad. Right. But it yeah. wasn't, it was, it's just, that's, this that's what I got to do. How I survive because if I let you know this about me, then I don't feel strong. I exactly. don't feel courage, uh, full of courage. And I love that we're on this topic in this exact situation because what it does, and this is like totally an analogy metaphor type of thing, not, uh, not exactly, but what you do by walking home and making the lie is you take away the opportunity to go i'm gonna walk home and then the other person working goes i'm already going that way you want to ride mm -hmm. and like i don't want the ride though but i was like i would try to be too prideful like yeah i'm good yeah i know me take too me yeah. too man and like you take that 
blessing away because you never know like then that person takes you home and they see your situation and maybe they got a different opportunity for you or just like you never know like i'm right. i'm so obsessed now with the possibility of opportunity right you know and you just gotta be vulnerable to let that happen too you do ways. you do and like you like, got take that ride yeah i'll take i'll take the ride like i'm gonna swallow my pride and my ego uh-huh. you know but it's like it's hard too because I'm sure doing things like that got you to a certain place, bro. It's how I it's how I killed it. Like it's how yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm Kronos, bro. Like yeah. it's, it's, it built me this tough armor by doing. You know, that's that's how I live my life. It's just like don't let anybody in, sort of thing. Like, and it's like, of course I let Shaylee in, but there's still levels that I didn't even let her in. Exactly. You know? So you know what's weird too, Jake, is I think that uh, I think that as humans we evolve. You know, and like, I don't know. I think, I think that built a certain part of you. It did. You know, and like, although it's not what you want to be today, like, I'm grateful, I can say, for doing things a certain way, you know, when I was going to, even though like they may not have been right, like, because it's taught me a lot Mm -hmm. about myself and like, about what not. To be involved in exactly, but I mean, just like you were saying with with like your your perspective on you and your mom, it's the same thing. Like you you learn from it by experiencing it. Like you don't yeah. have to stay in like a bitter like I wish I had this, I wish I would have done this. It's yeah. like, well, you you did this. This is what happened. This is how life was handed to you. Like now, what? How does your perspective work in a forward movement now? Exactly, exactly. It's like my mom. She's been married like six times, you know, and like. I could always tell growing up, like, you know how when people say stuff, but they don't say it, like, you know what they're saying, but they don't uh-huh. say anything. Like, I always kind of felt that, like, around my mom and her getting married. And, like, as I grow up, it's like, dude, my mom wants to be loved. Doesn't she, right? Like, like you, you know what I mean? Like, she wants to be loved, like, everyone else on this planet. And she keeps trying. Right. So, what I'm going to take out of it is that she ain't giving up. You know what I mean? And so, like, those are the perspectives that I'm able to have through disciplines that I've chosen to take part in. Right. You know, and so for people that are listening, because I know a lot of people probably feel certain types of ways because you don't want the neighbors thinking, you know, one thing or the other, but it's like, they're just people. They're just people. They didn't, uh, dude. I, I would say, like, what'll what'll stop a conversation is you just remind everybody they didn't ask to be born. You didn't either, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, rem- like we don't remember that shit, but we were all babies, just like, what the fuck is happening? And then all of a sudden, we just had the moment. Our life gave us momentum, and we f- we just started running. We had, all right, we're walking now. Walk with it, and we never stopped and said, like, what's the momentum I got, man? And we're all like that, and it's okay. Yes. And we're all, but if you can get to a point where you can stop, you know what I want to do right now is um, we're getting up here in time. Yeah, um, yeah. We'll, we'll end it here shortly, but I do yeah. want to, so let's just like anybody who by whatever chance they're listening and they're, they're struggling with their own addict stuff. Mm-hmm. They're, 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 you know, drinking too much. Like, you know, I've been there doing blow. I've been there yeah. um, all that just into it too much. Um, and, and they want, they want a way out. Um, what do they need? Like, what do they need to hear? Or maybe like, what what did you need to hear? Or what's something that could aid these people that doesn't it doesn't make them feel alone and make them feel alienated? And like, you're not weird. Hey, listener, if if you got some problems, you, oh, you got some addictions, bro, me too. Mm-hmm. Fucking me too. It happens. You're human. That's okay. But if you want to get out of it and you want to like move on to that thing that you know is in your heart, like you can, motherfucker, you can. I love that. I love that. And I love that this is going to be the finish. Um, this is my perspective on it, okay? As an addict, the reason why we use is because we're uncomfortable with things in our life, okay? So a lot of the times what we see happen is you get clean and you realize that it wasn't the drugs or the alcohol, that it was just your being. So in order to continue on a path of sobriety and to not have or at least decrease the urge you have to work on yourself in an unwavering manner Mm -hmm. 
And that is going to look different for a lot of people. But for me, what it looked like is taking a piece of paper and a pen and getting my character defects laid down so I then can take accountability for those character defects and start to work towards fixing them. And maybe it's not a character defects. Maybe you were unfortunate and your parents didn't have enough money to buy you braces and your teeth were fucked up and you Mm. felt shitty about it your whole life. So maybe what's going to give you hope is if you sit down and say, well, if I go to work and I put this amount of money away for this amount of time, I can then get braces. Mm -hmm. If that's something Mm -hmm. that you want. Now, like I said before, it's going to look different for people. Some person might say, I am going to embrace these teeth. Because these are Danny my Brown, teeth. Danny Brown, the rapper. Exactly. Because yeah. these are my teeth and this is me. People are different. Okay? One person might be completely fulfilled from the new teeth. One person might be completely fulfilled for the other. So you have to go deep, deep down into your mm-hmm. core. And like I talked about previously, ego. Anybody who's using is trying to change the way that they feel. They feel. Mm hmm. It's a very self-centered act. It's a very, very self-centered act. So I have to step out of myself and realize how I'm going to become of service Mm. to others because it takes me out of the daily thinking of I need to be okay. Right. Dude, when you're able to, that moment you're talking about, you step out of yourself and what, what happens there, like I feel like the word ego has been just like, people just oh i know what it means like and okay it means being cocky like like mm-hmm. for people who don't consume it the word it sucks be, i mean it's a complicated thing to describe very, but, very. Uh, but but i think that when you said step out of yourself to me try to see maybe if you're if you're in that position try to see like when you step out of yourself make sure you're looking right back at your ego like you step out of yourself well, what's still there like what do you still want what's your desires like those desires those addictions those things like i need this to feel whole like no you fucking don't and when you step over here and you step out of yourself Mm -hmm. they can't see my hand gestures but uh, (laughs) when you step out of yourself you can look so i think for me before i got into ego work and stuff i before i really conceptualized what it was it it was in my head me versus my depression that's how i started Mm -hmm. i was like that's how i conceptualized like how do i not argue with myself and more of like a like, okay, I was being mopey. How do I have this like spark of like a Jake that's like, hey, motherfucker, stop that. Be yeah. positive. No, no, let's look at this. And you almost like, you exit your body for a second, take a look at yourself. And when you could say, um, I'm just emphasizing that spot. If you can separate yourself, this is my ego. This is my depression. To take a step outside of yourself. Just like you said, Jace, I think that's. Yeah, yeah and look at it. And that's to take a step out and then to be able to look at that ego. Yeah. You know, and it's going to hurt. It's hurts, gonna hurt, man. but it's okay, bro. It's not forever. It's it gonna is. hurt right now. And you know what you can do is you can make amends. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. that's a, that's been a mm-hmm. very real part of my life, Jake. Yeah, like a very very real real part of my life is yeah. because and and understand that that's not you. That's that's the shit. You yeah. know, like and give yourself and also for people that are struggling with addiction, give yourself a break, man. I don't yeah. care. I don't care if you're freaking if you're 55 and yeah. you've never done anything. Give yourself a break, dude. Yeah. This is the world. Yeah, bro. Okay? Whatever tension is in your body right now, if you're listening, just relax. You could relax. give yourself a break, bro. And, this and, is hard. It's and hard. I'm saying this right now. I'm the most balled up motherfucker ever all the damn time. <laughs> Seriously, all the damn time. Because I'm so concerned about where I'm going, what my life looks like, and shit like that. But like, when my fiance has me go out into a field and take my shoes and socks off. And I feel even corny saying it. Bless her for this though. Yeah, dude. And let me tell you something. We need this. And I put my feet on the ground and I put this fucking cell phone so far out of sight that I just don't even want to touch it. I never feel better. Yes. I never feel better. I love that. It puts me in a state where I don't react. Yes. I be able to just be. That's what we're, yeah. It's crazy. That's a beautiful spot to set it off, bro. It is. I love it this. Is, um, is. Can you drop your ats uh, if people want to check out your music? Can yes, you- please. I just started a new Instagram account. It's at J Saltzman. That's J A C E S A L T Z M A N. No underscores, nothing like that. Just at J Saltzman. And then uh, also SoundCloud as well. It's going to be the same exact thing. Just put the YouTube account up. 
as well. So yeah, I'm working on that. Cool. All those places, we're shooting a visual for the music video, and we're gonna be bringing you guys more content. The Instagram live was fun. What we did on the Instagram live is uh, for 50 minutes, I put instrumentals on, and the people on the Instagram live, I had them comment a word, and I'd rap off that word. Oh, that's so fun! And if they stumped me, that's their the- name got put in a drawing to win a hundred bucks. And what that's savage that's yeah. a good ass idea yeah bro. so at like the end that. of the night we drew out what a, little... a challenge for you too that's fun as heck it, it how was, did you do how did it feel like it was sick bro you know what's so tight is what when kelly and i uh we first started playing parties like after we had like it had been years since i had been djing yeah but to get better we would do almost the same thing we'd go to parties and it'd be like we're not getting paid so you can fuck up like uh but we would th- he would tell me a song or he would go through my library without me looking and he'd load it into the deck and say transition into that no we shit. would do that same sort yeah. of thing bro and challenge yourself like it, that I yeah love that. it polishes you it gives people a show and it lets people get involved you know right and like it's a big thing and dude that instagram live did wonders for the following on there because i'm trying to build it up like of course it was crazy and it's just so cool and i can't wait to bring people more performances and stuff like that and it's just, it's a good time. And at the end of it, what I did is I wrote something special for George Floyd. Okay, great. Yeah. Awesome. And so I ended it with like uh, a very serious tone, even though everybody was turning up and we were having fun. And mm. I said some real stuff that I had written that was from the heart. And it was a very cool transition from a good time to a serious one. But right. It gave people, I feel like, the full experience of me, and that's what I want to do is give people the full experience of me and allow them to come and show themselves in the process and hope that something that I said, because when I was freestyling, I tried to be super honest too, resonates, you know? Exactly. Or somebody says, oh shit, he didn't do it his whole life and he wanted to, maybe I'm going to go do that thing. Hell yes. You know? Exactly. You can do it. Yeah. All right, listener, it's been Jay Saltzman and I. Check him out. Take care of yourself. Drink some water. Do some stretches. Yeah. Look in the mirror and say, "It's okay, man. I'm gonna get it figured out. You it's gonna all right. be all right." Peace out. Late. Hey, friends. Hope you're enjoying the podcast. If you are, just share it with a friend. That's all I ask. Take a screen recording. Uh, grab a quote and text it out to one of your homies. You don't have to share it on your Facebook or on your social media. I don't care. Just if you enjoyed it, if you got something from it, just tell someone. Just let them know. Maybe it'll help somebody out. Um, in my world, the junkcarelove.space website is still down, but uh, I'm working on it. I have some friends who are helping me out. I'm trying to not just do it all on my own because then it just doesn't get done, right? So I have some friends helping me out. Um, it will be up here in a few weeks, and on there will be all of my uh, music stuff and my DJ mixes, like uh, my whole back catalog will be all linked there um, to my DJ mixes since like 2012 or something. Um, and it'll have my YouTube channel and like the, the talks that I t- um, give on YouTube. And I'm slowly posting more and more of those. And then it'll also have uh, meditations and guided meditations and info about meditation that I will just compile all the stuff that I do onto the junkyardlove.space. So that'll be up in a few weeks. Uh, in the meantime, you can find, find me, DJ stuff, Jacob from the internet on Mixcloud. Hope you guys are loving and living and enjoying your life. Take care of yourselves.